but I think the development of full artificial intelligence will spell the end of the human race. It's a flying object, and we don't know what it is. I would hope somebody is checking it out. I'm glad the Pentagon is looking at this, because if it poses a threat, I want them on top of it. Well, the craft generates its own gravitational field. So you said there's lights in the sky? The Internet has become the command center for criminals and terrorists. Happen. You know, that's that's what we're instructed to say. Roswell, Area 51, alien kept deep under the ground. self-serving. You're here for a reason. You're listening to Trouble Minds Radio. Broadcasting live from a secret bunker just off the extraterrestrial highway. Somewhere in the desert sands outside of Las Vegas. From somewhere in space time, loosely labeled Generation X on planet Earth. And asking questions of you in earnest. Into the digital darkness. Good evening and welcome to Troubled Minds Radio. I'm your host, Michael Strange, and we're streaming on YouTube, Rockfin, Rumble, Twitter, and Twitch. We are broadcasting live on the Troubled Minds Radio Network. That is KUAP Digital Broadcasting tonight. Hey, have you noticed, uh, as you know me, I'm a connoisseur of the news cycles, and I like to kind of maybe sniff out some patterns. They call it that synchro mystic life or whatever. Kind of looking at uh, larger themes of, uh, let's say, articles coming out and turning into, well, maybe larger ideas in the zeitgeist or actual, let's say, maybe hints or clues of what's actually happening. Well, beyond uh, beyond the, let's say, the, the, the regular normie, uh, let's say, v- uh, purview of, uh, of sort of noticing these things. I don't know. Like I said, I, I don't think I'm a special in that regard. I, but I do notice uh, sometimes that there seems to be well, a cascade of things that kind of come out around the same time about the exact same thing, just sort of different aspects of the exact same idea. And, you know, maybe you have to have a little bit of a conspiratorial mindset or, you know, this type of stuff. But uh, I don't know, like, I, like I've always said to you with this show that uh, there are conspiracies everywhere, but not everything is a conspiracy. And I think it's a, one of those, uh, again, basic tenets of troubled minds and what, what we should always consider is, What's happening with this stuff? And is it, uh, again, some sort of a a nefarious plot to, uh, you know, take over the world or uh, brainwash us or manipulate this or that or the other thing? Or is it, uh, well, is it just uh, because there's so much information, it's easy to kind of cherry pick things that seem to make some sense and talk about them. And that's that's really where we start tonight and what's on my mind uh, this evening, because we've talked about this uh, this particular thing uh, several times, probably in the past year, maybe two times that I can remember. But there seems to be an, an, another avalanche or cascade of this information flowing into the news cycle. Well, uh, wouldn't you know it, it's talking about music. And, of course, not just music, but how it can alter perception, mood, this type of stuff, which is nothing new. We know this, you know. We were all a teenager once that had our, you know, Sony Walkman uh, peeled uh, headphones, some tiny little headphones back in the day, put on, uh, you know, and, and just uh, really changing. Uh, I'm not so sure it was changing our mood. Maybe it was uh, turning us into monsters or something. You know what I mean? Uh, not that uh, you, you need any excuse to call mo- uh, teenagers monsters, at least in my experience from when I was a teenager and having a brother and a sister. And uh, yeah, uh, just growing up in 
uh, in California with the old, uh, you know, teenage crew of school, if you know what I mean. Uh, people aren't the nicest, and especially when they start to get into those teenage years, they kind of become monsters a little bit. It does make me wonder if there's something to do with, uh, let's say, the, the actual uh, music again. But here's the thing. Now, it's not just the same uh, the same old thing we're talking about because there's a ton of things in the news cycle that describe exactly what's happening with this music stuff, okay? And specifically, one of the things that you guys probably noticed that uh, is back in the news cycle this past week is Havana Syndrome, okay? And not only that, that they've really sort of, again, told us that they've figured this out. And it's, it's all about, uh, what's it about? It's about, now it's about Russia, okay? It's about Russia actually doing, well, yeah, frying the brains of our diplomats, right, as they're doing whatever diplomat stuff all over the world, right? Not just in uh, Cuba, but in other places as well. And 60 Minutes has said uh, recently in some articles suggest that uh, backing them up, that there's something happening with this. And it is Russia. It's a, some sort of Russian intelligence aspect or something like this, right? And if you, you notice, uh, let's say this was probably maybe a week ago, we talked about uh, Yuri Bezmenov. You remember that? And sort of the demoralization of, of a society. And it only takes a generation to do it. And, you know, he was talking about this in 1984, uh, very aptly named, uh, I mean, the year. A nice coincidence that uh, he was talking about the KGB doing this type of stuff way back in um, the Cold War, during the Cold War, trying to demoralize America and turn us into a, let's say, a uh, a, a, a state of people that are uh, completely and wholly unsatisfied with the things we have, even though we are uh, the top of the world when it comes to uh, actual uh, living conditions. I mean, you know, used to be that's that's declining now. But anyway, so I'm ahead of myself a little bit here. But uh, keep Havana syndrome in the back of your mind as we get into this, because the new information suggests that there's something happening with this. And it is possibly a foreign state actor, as we suggested in the past, and as has been suggested by other people in the past as well. But what does it mean? And how, how does this, you're like, okay, cool, Havana Syndrome, got it, Mike. What, is this, what does this have to do with music? Well, you may have also noticed that this uh, article came out recently as well. This is from The Guardian. And this is uh, going back to, what, a few days ago. Uh, what's, the, what's the damn date on this? March 28th, okay? So last week sometime, uh, what, uh, yeah, uh, I keep trying to figure out what day it is today. Oh, yeah, it's the third. Uh, so, yeah, so uh, going back to last week, we've got this. This is from The Guardian. Now, uh, hang tight on this real quick and bear with me. Uh, song lyrics getting simpler, more repetitive, angry, and self-obsessed. Huh. Well, that's strange. <laughs> you, you say, right? We talked about this a long time ago, like I said, with sort of a song lyrics and, you know, maybe even uh, the the old, uh, you know, 60s revolution, the hippie revolution being manipulated by uh, possibly by music and the CIA. Well, what if this is happening from all a all uh, aspects and all facets, very much like Havana syndrome, and they're describing this as the Russian thing. So keep the Havana syndrome in the back, back of your pocket. Check this out. So researchers analyzed the words in more than 12,000 English language songs across several genres from 1980 to 2020 40 year span right a very yuri Bezmenov, uh, you know kind of a generation almost right so here it is straight from the article you're not no uh, you're not just getting older song lyrics really are becoming simpler and more repetitive according to a study published on thursday lyrics have also become angrier and more self-obsessed over the last 40 years the study found reinforcing the opinions of cranky aging music fans everywhere those damn kids and their music right get off my lawn a team of European researchers analyzed the words in more than 12,000 English language songs across the genres of rap, country, pop, R&B, and rock from 1980 to 2020. Before detailing how lyrics have become more basic, the study pointed out that U.S. singer-songwriter legend Bob Dylan, who rose to fame in the 60s, has won a, a Nobel Prize in literature. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. They're, they're uh, digressing very quickly. But you get the idea, right? So this study is like, okay, let's look at music and see if it is actually objectively different than it was, you know, 40 years ago. Well, it turns out uh, your intuition is correct, and it, it very much is, all right? Now, uh, again, so keep uh, keep the idea of Havana syndrome in your back pocket as I talk about this. Now, here's the, the wild part, okay? Uh, we've said this in the past, and it's part of the news show. If you guys have been listening to Troubled Minds for a while, you know that I used to do a news show. And in the, in the intro of that particular news show, it, it described a very specific thing, that uh, repetition is the most basic form of brainwashing, right? Yeah, all right. So then uh, let's take that back to the Yuri Bezmenov, the uh, Havana Syndrome, and back to this. Song lyrics getting simpler, more repetitive, angry, and self-obsessed. 
Weird, right? It seems strange, almost like uh, this is, uh, w- 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 who's leading whom, right? I guess becomes the question. Are we sort of, this is a, a um, an, an exhibition of sort of angst and the zeitgeist manifesting in uh, musical art, or is it the opposite? Is it some, some sort of an algorithmic push of this uh, same style of music to the top of the charts because, well, they need us to hear it and they want to man- manipulate us with it, right? So again, uh, the, w- w- which comes first, the cart or the horse? chicken or the egg, this type of thing, uh, depends on uh, who's who's uh, driving the wagon, right? All right, so, now, so that's where we start. So song lyrics and the studies here uh, on fizz.org, you can find this in, a, in a, a few different places if you want to check this out. Links will be in the description if uh, you want to dig into this. And I do uh, encourage you to read some of this stuff, the studies in full if you're into these ideas, all right? But here's the thing. So that's it. That's where we begin, and I'll leave it there for just a second as we get a quick word from our sponsor, and we'll be right back with more Trouble Minds. Don't go anywhere. This is just a quick minute, and uh, say, uh, instead of uh, angrier and more repetitive, let's uh, take a moment and reflect on, uh, well, what uh, might be different and what might change in the coming days, weeks, and months, and of course, uh, that means the Stoic Minute coming right up. Be right back. One minute. More Trouble Minds on the way. Feeling stressed? Overwhelmed? In today's fast-paced world, it's easy to get swept away by our emotions. Take a breath and find your inner strength with the Stoic Minute. You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. The ancient Stoic philosophers understood that we can't control everything in life, but we can control how we react. The happiness of your life depends upon the quality of your thoughts. Focus on what you can influence. Cultivate a positive mindset and let go of what you can't change. Find your inner strength. Live each day with courage, wisdom, justice, and moderation. Embrace the stoic virtues and find peace within. The Stoic Minute brought to you by Jack in Oregon. Welcome back to Troubled Minds. I'm Michael Strange. Let's continue, shall we? Now, okay, so there's this article that I was kind of, I was thinking about this, and I was like, I wonder if there's been sort of studies, sort of an extrapolation of these ideas to the future, right? Sort of looking at uh, what this may bring for the coming days, all right? Uh, The coming, let's say, 20 years, for instance. And there's an article from the BBC. This goes back to May of 2019, and it describes exactly this. What will music be like in 20 years? Okay, well, uh, we have some hints now because we have a study that actually suggests that song lyrics, again, are getting simpler, more repetitive, angry, and self-obsessed. So what about 20 more years? And a couple of things come to mind as I'm thinking about this, as I was uh, kind of pondering what to talk about tonight. I, I, there's like 10 ideas or 15 ideas. I've got, I've got so many ideas. But uh, basically, I usually go with uh, one, something I can talk about and be, you know, mildly interested in and uh, inspired by. And it, I know something about it, okay, because it's quite easier to do a show when you know something, a little something about something, right? Instead of trying to uh, talk about the cosmic science when you know very little about it, right? You get it. Uh, but uh, in this case, uh, there was a, a ton a ton of these articles kind of in the, the zeitgeist really kind of screaming that, uh, hey, there's something going on with the music here. And so for, we're, we have this study that suggests over the last 40 years, this is what's happening. Well, what is what is the next 20 years going to bring? And sport, especially in an AI world where uh, you've probably seen this a lot too, where uh, what, is it Katy Perry and uh, I don't know, all, all the, the, the rich uh, pop stars now are super mad uh, what Billy Eilish and they're all hella mad because they're like, oh, uh, you know, AI music, it's going to like destroy the human artist. It's like, okay, well, uh, would you be mad if you were, you know, not rich? Right. And you, you could, didn't uh, that couldn't hire lawyers because you couldn't afford them to go go after, you know, chat GPT or whoever the hell's making these these uh, AI music things. Right. I mean, it's always uh, the battle of haves and have nots. OK. And we're talking about music in that sense. Well, a lot of ways to consider this. But uh, imagining what m- music will look like in 20 years is really kind of on the docket tonight. That's what's uh, going on and how much of this is. Uh, manipulation and uh, actual social conditioning and social control. And I do think there's something to this and I'll explain. And here's why, like we've, we've talked about this sort of in a cursory way in the past, but I think there's actually a case to be made now because of all this new information coming out. Exhibit two, check this out. Now uh, we've got this just hit. This is from, uh, what is it? Psypost.org. And this is interesting. Very, very interesting. Uh, the headline is this, and this is from uh, March 20th. So uh, not too long ago, this is this year. Borderline personality disorder symptoms linked to music preferences. Oh, 
you don't say. That's weird, right? That's that's incredibly weird. What does that mean? What does that mean? Well, it means, and again, just a a hip shot from a, a, a you know dirty conspiracy theorist on the interwebs. But uh, it means that they know specifically what kind of music to play to turn us into whatever they want to turn us into. Okay, and again, go back to the last forty years. Lyrics more simple, uh, more self self obsessed. All the rest of this stuff, angrier, repetitive. Right? And again, back to the re- the idea of repetition as the most basic form of brainwashing. You get what's happening, right? So suddenly, we're starting to see a pattern. Okay, now check this out. This is pretty wild. If you read uh, through this article again, link's going to be in the description. Individuals with varying degrees of borderline personality disorder uh, symptoms exhibit distinct music preferences, according to new research published in Psychology of Music. The findings shed light on how the psychological functions attributed to music can influence musical tastes. And we've talked about this a lot in the past in different ways, but they've got some data on this now. And they're actually saying, wait a minute, people that listen to this particular type of music or these particular types of genres actually are having these actual uh, personality dis- personality disorder syndrome. So so what the hell's happening with this? So you, so you start to see what I'm saying, exhibit two. Now, the weird part is, let me read this. This is probably not as you would expect. When I was reading through this, I was a little surprised. I was going to think, oh yeah, you know, the the hardcore rap and those heavy metal, you know, headbangers, those, those disturbed people, right? Those disturbed people. No, no, it's not. No, what you think? Hold on, check this out. So the researchers found that participants with higher borderline personality syndrome severity exhibited distinct preferences for certain types of music. Notably, individuals exhibiting higher symptom severity showed a preference for reflective and complex music genres, such as classical or jazz. What? (laughs) While showing less interest in intense and rebellious genres like heavy metal or punk. Hmm, that's interesting. That's odd, right? Yeah, okay, anyway, and I was just making a joke about the rap in the metal, but I'm kind of going back to that 80s, you know, the, the satanic panic, damn kids these days and their crappy music, right? Anyway, so the researchers also examined how the psychological functions of music serve as mediators in the relationship between borderline symptoms and music preferences. They found that these functions partially explain why individuals with higher borderline personality symptom severity favor a, or disfavor certain types of music genres. Uh, quote, we have demonstrated that the severity of borderline personality symptoms is closely related to the preferred type of music. Okay, now now you see what I'm saying. Exhibit two. We're starting to see some interesting patterns here. So not just the study of the last 40 years with the lyrics getting simpler, more repetitive, angry, self-obsessed. Now we have this actual study that suggests not only is the style of music linked to a particular actual disorder, a, a an actual you know mental disorder, uh, and even uh, able to... Dare we say, the more you listen to this stuff, the more it turns you into whatever they want to turn you into. Very uh, MK Ultra and very uh, what is it, uh, uh, Manchurian Candidate type of stuff, right? Like if they want to sort of fracture the minds of a particular society, they could press so I don't know bubblegum pop into the zeitgeist with a uh, you know self obsessed uh, repetitive lyrics. You, you get what I mean, and and maybe. Just maybe. Again, like I said, I think there's a pattern here. I think there's a pattern developing, which is strange, all right? Now, that's not all of it. I bring you Exhibit 3. Now, Exhibit 3 is, let's see, where is it? Uh, Here we go. No, 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 that's not it. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's a couple here. A couple. I got, uh, hold on, borderline personality. The, The study's there. Okay, and here's another one. Here's another one. Oh, sorry, not that one. This one. We'll do this, and then we'll go to the last one, which which brings it all the way around. And this is uh, from January 30th. So music's universal impact on body and emotion. And we've talked about this quite a lot in, in different ways on the show. And uh, what this means as far as mood, as far as, you know, uh, the stoic mindset, as far as uh, being manipulated by uh, audio in some way or another, okay? Well, th- this is obvious. This is one of those obvious ones that everybody knows. And, of course, the summary on this is a recent study reveals that music's emotional impact transcends cultures, evoking similar bodily sensations globally. Uh-huh. Researchers found that happy music energizes arms and legs while sad tunes resonate in the chest. Oh, isn't that sad? The, this cross-cultural study involve, involving 1,500 participants from the West and Asia links music's acoustic features to consistent emotions and bodily responses. Oh, well, that's weird. So it seems like it's not just a Western thing. This is happening all over the world, right? The findings suggest that uh, music's power to unify emotions and movements may have played a key role in human evolution, fostering social bonds and community. Okay. Exhibit three. Now, uh, let's go to exhibit four. And this is where this really starts to turn 
strange because all this is in the last, let's say, six weeks of news cycles. And I, as you know, I kind of ferret this stuff away and, and keep it and uh, start to see if I can recognize patterns when there's interesting things kind of bubbling up. Now, check this out. This is wild. This is from SciPost.org, and all these links will be in the description down below if you want to check it out. New psychology research indicates psychopathy is linked to social power in dating success in adverse environments. Okay. Now, what does this have to do with the music and all the rest of this? Well, it's it's a way to manipulate people. It's a way to actually, let's say, uh, suggest particular outcomes based on particular uh, stimuli or, uh, let's say, um, societal situations. Okay. And uh, just a uh, real quick on this. So adolescents who grew up in negative social environments characterized by hostility, neglect, and competition may develop psychopathic traits as a form of adaptation to obtain socially valued outcomes, such as popularity and dating success, according to new research published in Development in Psychopathology. This suggests that the behaviors often associated with, associated with psycho psychopathy, such as manipulation and a lack of empathy, might in some contexts serve as a strategy for adolescents to navigate and succeed in challenging social landscapes. Okay. Challenging social landscapes, all right, which brings us full circle all the way back to Yuri Bezmenev back in 1984 and the idea that a, a society that's actually being um, uh, demoralized is exactly what we're dealing with in the zeitgeist and in the, the institutions and, in, of course, in Congress and every, every aspect of the American society, right? But also, it, it seems like these sort of outcomes of uh, you, you see, let's say, society with just enough stuff, just enough of these sort of uh, beginning of these ideas to lead us down these paths will bring us all the way back to the brainwash, back to, again, being manipulated by things that uh, are probably, uh, this stuff has been uh, studied for years and years and years and years. So it's strange to me that this kind of comes about and we look at this and go, okay, so if this is real and this stuff is really happening, then they've probably known about this for a very, very long time, as suggested in that one article where it's like, well, uh, human, it's basically been the, the, the sound basis of human interaction and possibly human evolution in the social space talking about music, okay, which uh, it brings everybody together. As we know, like I said, if you've ever been to a concert that everybody is just so in love with the, the artist or the band or whatever it is, you you know it, you feel it. There's so many people that are happy and they're excited and they just they just love being there. It's, it's, it's one of the most euphoric, amazing things because there's so much positive energy and there's a lot of that happening here in um, Vegas too. Like I said, it's pretty wild when you uh, go down to one of these shows in Vegas and you get, you get these super fans that come out to Vegas. And so they're in, you know, they're in uh, sin city and everybody's having a hell of a time and they're here, you know, possibly seeing one of their favorite bands and it just exudes this uh, positive emotion. It's unreal. Like everybody's all the tourists are down there hugging each other and buying people drinks and they're just, uh, it's wild. It's absolutely wild. You guys know exactly what I'm talking about. You, you've all been to a concert. I would expect at this point, uh, you, you, uh, you get a little gray in the hair out there. I see, I see some gray hair out there in any case. So notice how a lot of these ideas come together and it's basically manipulating who we're becoming by, uh, again, influencing our social aspects, our social boundaries, our social, let's say even bonds and, uh, doing this through, uh, something as simple as the, the, the lyrics getting more simple and angry and self-obsessed. And yeah, it's not get off my lawn kid. It is, uh, as the Robert says, uh, all music uh, AI music got no soul. Give me that old time human generated rock and roll. <laughs> Amen to that, sir. Okay. Now here's the thing. Now full circle all the way back around. And this is what's on my mind tonight as we go. Look back at Havana syndrome now. Now, suddenly if you're like, okay, so I've heard people say, come on, Mike, I don't believe that there's like a, a some person running around with like a, you know, a, a, a directed energy pew pew that they roll up in a car or something and, you know, a fire at, uh, the, I don't know, the, 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 the building or something, you know, to, 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 to make somebody sick. Well, that's not what this, this suggests, at least again, and I'm not lost on the fact that this could be propaganda because they're, they're fingering Russia and saying specifically, these guys are the ones that are, uh, you know, doing this damage to our, our actual, uh, uh, diplomats and, and everything else and the rest of the directed energy stuff. And right. Okay. But it, it seems like according to this, that there is a, supposedly somebody running around with some sort of device where they can target people, maybe even domestically. And so the question becomes, now, uh, with with this entire basis tonight, back to Yuri Bre Bezernev, we did talk about this recently, uh, briefly, but then also 1984, okay, and de the demoralization of a society, all right, and then 
maybe are we doing this through the musical aspect? Back to this. Uh, exhibit one, two, three, and four tonight. It seems like we have even turned this into a science on how exactly to manipulate people because it's happening. And so the question for tonight is this. Uh, lots of questions, of course, but we'll start with this. Number one, which came first? A demoralized society or is the music leading us sort of down that path, right? You see, which which is first? And as a demoralized society, we're writing more and more uh, self-obsessed lyrics. We're writing more angry, more repetition, more brainwash type stuff. What's exactly going on with this? Number two, what's happening with this new Havana syndrome stuff? And, and how wild is this? And do you think it's related at all? Or do you think it's propaganda? Number three, what about manipulating people again with uh, actual borderline personality disorder syndrome with different genres of music. And if they can sp split this up into different things, specifically, oddly enough, classical and jazz, they say, are going to be more apt to have a higher severity of this borderline personality disorder. Is it possible that maybe bubblegum pop with uh, these uh, song lyrics that are more repetitive, angry, and self-obsessed are actually doing something very specific and the, all, all of this stuff we're dealing with is not an accident. You see how, like I said, when you start to look at the news cycles, they start to tell you some stories based on the information coming out. Now, are all these things related? I'm not so sure. However, it seems to me that there's a common thread here, and that becomes the question for you guys tonight. Who's leading whom? And are we ahead of the zeitgeist as part of our sort of let's say, demoralization of Western society and writing these lyrics that are, well, not as you would expect them to be, or are these lyrics sort of being forced algorithmically onto radio stations through money and programming and all the rest? And maybe, just maybe, this is part of the demoral demoralization of society itself. And I don't know. That becomes the question tonight, and I don't know the answer. I do have a hunch that maybe this is related to the Havana Syndrome-style stuff. And, of course, the Manchurian Candidate and the MK Ultra for the Masses. So what do you know about it? How much of this, uh, how deep does this go? Is it related? And do you sense something amiss with these uh, several articles I've pointed out tonight? Because I do think there is a connection. And there you go. That puts me right about where I'd like to be, and hopefully you as well. But that's what's on my mind tonight. And again, there's, there's a way, a lot of ways to look at this, and, you know, we're going we're gonna to have a dog in the fight because a lot of us like a particular genre or style of music, but I don't think that matters as much. I think uh, looking at, let's say, the, the overall landscape of the music body as it's changed over the last 40 years and even into the next 20, what do we expect to see becomes really the question. Love to hear your thoughts on this. 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. This is Troubled Minds. I'm Michael Strange. Don't go anywhere. More. An unwilling instrument, bardic code in the future, and of course your calls when we return. We got uh, Joe in Florida. Looks like we got the Robert on the line, and uh, maybe Andy uh, going to join us a little bit later. Be right back. More Trouble Minds coming up. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Troubled Minds. I'm your host, Michael Strange. We're streaming on YouTube, Rockfin, Rumble, Twitter, and Twitch. We are broadcasting live on the Troubled Minds radio network. That is KUAP Digital Broadcasting. Tonight, we're taking your calls as we discuss good old-fashioned music, the heart of rock and roll. Except, well, it's changing. And, of course, if you look at this study by uh, uh, done by, let's see, who did this? I don't know. By, by some, you know, some scientists out there. Uh, over the last 40 years, song lyrics are getting simpler, more repetitive, angry, and self-obsessed, right? And it brings to mind that uh, demoralization of society, that idea that just maybe we are dealing with something that's over our head and uh, even being manipulated, not just algorithmically, but even to the point where some of the music that's being played, let's say, isn't necessarily uh, perfectly curated as a brainwashing tool or something like this, but a particular style or genre has been developed and even, let's say, pressed forward 
that uh, kind of leads us down the path of all all manner of wild stuff, including, of course, uh, let's see, where do we start? The, the more repetitive. And of course, the repetitive part is we've talked about that, like I said, on the news show. Uh, repetition is the most basic form of brainwashing. That's a fact. All you got to do is turn on what uh, turn on Sean Hannity and watch him bleat like a sheep about uh, Hillary's emails. What, uh, eight years later or whatever? I mean, the dude won't shut up. He's like he's like a machine. It's it's absurd if you guys ever turn on Sean Hannity on the radio. I put him on for like five seconds and I go, oh, God, he's still talking about this five years later and then I changed the channel. But uh, anyway, so it got me thinking about what this will look like in 20 years. OK, this repetition bit, the more self-obsessed, the angrier, the more repetitive lyrics. But then also there's some other stuff happening with regard to this borderline personality disorder symptoms of relationship with music use and investigating the role of music preferences and functions of music, which means that specifically they can say, you know, at least wink, you know, kind of squint your eyes scientifically, whatever that means that, uh, and I mean, in this context, because it's probably a smaller sample size and who knows, maybe they're cooking the books. I mean, God really knows what this type of stuff, right? Good enough for a conversation anyway, but you get, you get the idea that they're able to kind of point to a particular personality disorder that uh, manifests as part of the, uh, the, the actual musical taste you have, which is odd, strange, and, uh, well, compelling enough to kind of chase it down the rabbit hole of control. And, of course, this one again, music's universal impact on the body and emotion. And the recent study that says a cross-cultural study inv involving 1,500 participants in the West and Asia links music's acoustic features to consistent emotions and bodily responses. Well, no crap, Sherlock, as we said. The findings suggest that music's power to unify emotions and movements may have played a role in human evolution, fostering social bonds and community. And the point there is if you can do it that way, surely you can undo it, couldn't you? With particular, let's say, rhythms, particular, again, self-obsessed, angry, repetitive lyrics. What's going on here? Am I old man, get off my lawn? Or do you think there's actually something to this? And don't forget in the backdrop of this, we've got Havana syndrome back in the news. The pew pew weapon of the directed energy. And what does it mean? And now it's being blamed on Russia. Is that real? Is it propaganda? I don't know. Because uh, I, I, when I talked about this the last several times, I have a hunch it's real. And I have a hunch they don't want to tell us exactly what it is. Because, of course, if they're doing it, odds are we're doing it. And nobody wants to claim this because it looks horrific and you're melting people's brains. All right? Anyway. Love to hear your thoughts on this. 702-957-1037. Click the Discord link at troubledminds.org. We'll put you on the show. Let's go to uh, Joe in Florida. What's up, my man? You're on Troubled Minds. How are you tonight? And go right ahead. Uh, what is your thought here? I know you're a you're a music guy yourself and a DJ and all the rest, but uh, sorry to keep talking. I gave you a second to get back in here. Um, how you doing? You're on Troubled Minds. Go right ahead, sir. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, a little bit louder if you'd be so kind. I'll turn you up, but uh, yeah, see. go right ahead. How are we doing there? We good? Much better. Yeah, go ahead. A little better? Okay. So uh, I haven't been on for a while, so but I've been listening. Uh, good show and a good topic. Um, just to kind of move past a couple of things very quickly, Havana Syndrome, uh, definitely believe it is the Russians. I put in the chat, if you look up the book, which apparently is very hard to find now, I think, to get. It's a book called The Zappic of America. I've said it on this show before, probably last year. Um, my uncle, who was an electrician up in New York, he put a lot of antennas up and did a lot of work uh, on the Twin Towers. You know, back when the Twin Towers were, you know, being built or whatever. But anyhow, he had mentioned this book about microwaves and the zapping of America. Curiously enough, I remember it. I look up the book. I'm reading it right now off of Amazon. And the first review says Marconi died in the 1930s along with 30 military officers and scientists attempting to develop a microwave weapon for the fascists. By 1960, the KGB was microwaving the U.S. Embassy in Moscow. Three American ambassadors subsequent, subsequently died. I haven't fact-checked that, but the fact that that review is out there gives you something to look at. The technology would have only gotten better from there. So yeah, and he, we'll he's, move that away. And, yeah, yeah, I didn't you know, know we, that. If you, could, if you drop that in the Discord uh, when you get him in, I would appreciate that uh, so we can follow up. I just on, put on go to here. Amazon and Google up the book, but I'll try to put the link in there. Uh, I wish I could find the book. But the comments are pretty, that first comment sticks out, and it's been there. Uh, just to give you enough in a couple of, you know, in a couple of sentences. So we'll pack that away. Sure, go ahead. Uh, in the real world, I have to say, you know, first of all, is it leading us? I think it is. However, there are more in-home music studios, which may be the quality control of music, uh, may not be there like it used to be with promoters and agents and people would actually go out 
and watch people perform and then say, hey, you want a contract? You know, that kind of kept maybe quality control for music a little bit better. Okay. Um, but there are more in-home music studios. There is more outlets from TikTok and social media where musicians can, uh, you know, can, can play their songs and try their things out. Um, and then when you start to take the look of us being a little bit more self-obsessed, and again, we can look at social media for that, where we are creating our own reality, where we're the star of the show. And where it used to be where maybe us Gen Xers were the star of the show in school or in college or whatever we did, now you could get a camera and sit in your truck and be the star of your own show and have that outrage, whatever it may be. Yeah, well said. Well said. I'm not sure if you cut out or you're waiting for me to jump in there. Yeah, I mean, that that's exactly the point. We are certainly the the center of our own reality show. Like, all you got to do is fire up a damn TikTok account. And uh, funny enough, I was uh, doing my normal job. Are you there? I think you may have cut out. Did I cut out? Am I there? Test one, two. Anybody uh, in the chat? Can you confirm? <laughs> he uh, uh, suspiciously stopped talking. So I'm wondering if uh, he actually cut out or I'm cut out. Are we still broadcasting? We test to one, two, anybody out there? What's up? What's up? Anybody? Uh, what's up? You're there in discord. Yep. Uh, still broadcasting. All right. Uh, we'll wait for Joe to get back. Maybe his uh, internet took a crap. Uh, yeah, he's calling on the phone. He's all right. He's calling on the phone. We're live. Okay. I'm going to move him down and we'll take his call on the phone. Cause uh, I guess his, uh, his, his actual, uh, discord broke. But anyway, uh, what was I saying? Uh, what was I saying? Uh, I had a good point, but uh, now I'm, now I'm confused because I'm wondering what the hell happened. But anyway, we're talking to Joe tonight and, uh, we got some other callers lined up, uh, uh, four, four right off the bat. So it, we're going to go Joe first. We'll finish this call. We'll go to the Robert. We got David on the road. We got Andy as well. So hang tight guys. We'll get to you. Try and burn through this and, uh, let's share the lines guys. Here we go. Let's go to, uh, back to Joe in Florida. Thanks for, uh, popping back in. I'm sure, I'm not sure what happened. You confused the hell out of me, but, uh, you're on trouble. You lines. Know, the right I, answer. I, it's, it's never done that the computer just crashed oh. and i've never done that strangely enough and I haven't, I haven't really called into the show for a while and uh the damn thing just crashed and now it's you know i got now it's really starting again i don't know and it shouldn't be any updates anyway i think i was leaving off with music studios in home yes correct um yeah so you know with more music studios in the house and more self-promotion you know are our own reality has a farther outreach, if that makes sense, you know, to try to quickly go through it. And obviously you would become self-obsessed. A lot of people become self-obsessed. Uh, and we see this and we know this happens because we see hoaxes from maybe UFO hoaxes to uh, the people disappearing to certain artists like Kanye and certain people kind of losing their mind a little bit. And maybe it's because they're so driven and maybe they've reached their peak and they can never reach that peak again. And it eats at them. But leading us, we can look at uh, we can look, look at post war. Uh, you know, after World War II, we capitalism was great. The country was thriving. Everybody had a positive outlook. Okay. I can look at today's music as an expression of end stage capitalism. Where lyrics, I'm sure if we had a class on it. We could study it. I, you know, I think of a lot of New Order songs. When I listen to New Order, a lot of their songs, uh, especially a couple of the songs on Waiting for the Sirens Call, one of the albums there, they're all happy and everything. But if you really get down to the lyrics, it's like you're a slave to the wage. Certain things go on and on, and they directly criticize this system. We've seen it in, uh, you know, in the books in 1984 and all of that. We've seen it from Marx criticizing capitalism and surplus in the misery, in the grind. Okay. Now, does that have anything to do with outside state actors? I don't think so. Okay. However, the scarier point should be this. If we start to let AI really write the lyrics and AI wants to manipulate us, how would we ever really know? I guess. I mean, I guess we would know because AI would be writing lyrics. But, you know, a state actor, you know, would probably have to give these lyrics to a band. You'd be looking at some foreign agent that would be a music promoter. You know, I think it's kind of a, a far stretch. However, going back and forth, my son 
he listens to everything. The kid's his age, 18, 19, he's going to come out, you know, over to the castle with me this weekend for 80s night. But he'll listen to, until I kind of try to push a little bit of my music on him, but he'll listen to, and he calls it, he's like, oh, it's mumble. He calls it mumble rap. And it's repetitive. And you can't make out the lyrics, and it's kind of eh, you know? But on my end of it, when I go to shows, I went to three shows last week. I saw Ministry, Gary Newman. You can understand the lyrics for the most part. I went to go see another band, Urban Heat. You can understand the lyrics. I went to go see another band, Twin Tribes, that was the same night, and it's post-punk. And while the music is great, and it's not always uplifting, the lyrics you can't understand. It's like mumbling lyrics, a lot of these bands. It's kind of depressing. And sometimes I'm okay with being in that energy. Sometimes I'm not. You know? So it it does have a lot to do with it. I think it's the way the artists are portraying it. Like we go back to artists. Artists want to portray their feelings, whether it's on a canvas or musically. And let's face it, you know, it's coming out that people... You know, my, you know, people that are, you know, my kid's age, they're not going to be able to afford a house and things like that. So how do you think there's going to be an outlet for that? Yeah, it's, it's, I don't it, even think you need, I, I don't even think you need Russian agents to do that. It, capitalism will do it itself. Yeah, well, that uh, make sense? yeah, in a collapsing capitalist society, which has been brought about seemingly intentionally, the, uh, call it the, uh, uh, it engineered a demolition of uh, capitalism, which seems to be happening right before our eyes. Uh, and, and I think you're right. There is. So and that's why I think the question is so fascinating with this. We have a couple again, exhibit one, two, three and four tonight to kind of look at this and go, OK, so we have, you know, uh, wink, wink, new science that suggests uh, a lot of this stuff can be used to manipulate mind states in particular ways and it suggests even that uh, different styles and things like this could even bring about, uh, let's say, uh, a psychosis in some ways. OK, well, beyond that, now back to that Havana syndrome bit and and mix all these things together and you start to see why. And, and, and you're right on the ball, of course, why this is so compelling is because, of course, the artists are going to sort of echo the sentiment that society has in the zeitgeist it's in the air okay obviously but of course is that intentional and how much of that is being sort of pressed and how much of it all comes together as a a tool a manipulative tactic that uh, kind of uh, ushers along the end of capitalism it's a it's a wild thing to consider well a, a friend of mine that's listening to the show i, I wish you would call in because she's got a good education on this uh she may watch the velvet underground movie uh there's a movie on that but a guy, I believe it's called, she like just texted me, it's uh, a guy called Lamont Young. And it's funny because you mentioned jazz. And I, reading a brief quick Wikipedia on him, he started out as jazz. And I can only give a quick rundown, but then he started to experiment with sustained sounds. I wouldn't call it music, but sustained sounds and notes. So if you think about that, if you think about when you go to bed at night and you got a cheap ceiling fan and that fan hums, does it not drive you nuts? The electric, not the sound of the fan, but the sound of the humming from the transformer, the electricity. Okay? Now, picture that. Now, picture, I want everybody to think about when the power goes out, you have absolute silence in the house. There's nothing running when the power goes out, you know? And I can tell you this. Some nights when I'm done DJing and my ears are ringing, sometimes I can come home and go to sleep, no problem. And sometimes when I come home, and it's a really weird reverse thing, sometimes when I come home, I've got to actually put earplugs in because any background noise will, will, will bother me, you know? And then also just to give a quick aspect of DJing, I play every genre, basically, is what we're entering, you know, in, in two of the rooms of this place, it's mainly a golf club, but on some nights, you know, I will literally go from playing ABBA and I will have a happy crowd. I mean, I got videos of it had a happy crowd listening to ABBA and Blondie and going through. And then next thing you know, I'm playing, you know, you're some eighties. And the next thing you know, I'm playing like fallout boy, my chem, um, St. Patty's day. I was playing a, a drop kick and stuff. And it was fun to watch the crowd go into a frenzy. I'll be friendly, but it was still a little pit and going kind of crazy. And then, you know, you break out into Kenny Loggins and the crowd's attitude that quickly will change with the music, right? 
So then you got to ask yourself, what happens if something is manipulating us slowly? But to what ends and to what means? Will we could take more medication? I don't know. I don't know. But I do believe in what you're saying because as of late, my music tastes have kind of shifted probably from what I've been kind of having a DJ. You know, like Friday night I had to cover and Friday night I got to play more of the golf stuff and stuff that I, I've kind of missed because I haven't been able to play that. And even though the energy was good because I was picking songs to keep that energy good and fun, sometimes I don't want to hear some of the newer stuff. And that goes for, you know, that goes for hip hop. That goes for, for, for everything. Cause I think I generally want to have fun, but yeah, it's a scary thought. And I've, I've taken up enough time going back and forth as other callers. Uh, there's definitely an energy to it. We know it's true. There's LRAD, there's sound systems, uh, the LRAD low, low range acoustic device could, you know, bother you. Uh, do I think the Russians are doing something? I think we, I, I, I think we do. I think there's energy weapons. Uh, what's curious is I know if we have them, they heat up the skin. They'll heat up the skin to make you feel uncomfortable. I'm really curious what frequencies, whoever's using those things, can basically burrow into your mind uh, like an earworm or a worm, brain worm, how they're doing it, what they're doing it. And if we don't know where it's coming from, how can we ever catch it and repeat that technology? It's a scary thought. Definitely scary. Uh, and it's even scary if it's coming from a satellite. Yeah, or or, so, or or a dude in a car outside the house or whatever, like, like which is suggested in this this crazy article. If you guys didn't didn't see that the sixty minutes over the weekend, uh, I encourage you to watch it or read this article. They, they recaps it pretty well, but it it's suggesting that they have people operatives running around in these cars with these devices and putting them at your house or whatever. I, I mean that that just uh, the level well, of absurdity you, seems off the charts right there. If I remember in a couple of weeks, and then this is this, it's weird that the show came on with the synchronicity. I had a guy uh, come in this week for, you know, arrangements just to, for himself. You know, he, was, he had a lot of questions. And he's like, yeah, we traveled a lot. We used to go to, you know, we, we were, we, we lived in Africa. So the first thing I asked him was, uh, were you military? But I don't think he was. And I knew what the next answer was going to be. He was a diplomat. And he had been stationed all over. And we had a conversation about, you know, Ukraine and Israel. And, and you, you know, and he's been a diplomat since the 60s. If he comes back to do business with me, and I think he will. And I remember, I have no problems. The guy's retired. I have no problems asking him. And I might, if I remember it, I might, I might ask him, hey, do you know, you know, when you were stationed out in the 60s and stuff like that, do you, you know, can you tell me anything? That's it, you know? Um, so that would be kind of curious. And if I get an answer, I'll, I'll send it to you. Okay, you know, don't chat. Yeah, don't, um, don't get us in trouble, please. But uh, yeah, I, I'd love to hear some some of some of his take if it's not well, classified. You know, if you know what I'm saying, won't be anything, you know. But uh, me and this guy were having a conversation, Robert Kagan, and, and, and uh, you know uh, about uh, you know the future of, of, of things and foreign policy, basically. But he had been stationed in quite a few places. He didn't tell me where, but he was a diplomat. Um, so anyway, I will let you go. I hope everybody has a good night. I hope everybody has a good week. Uh, you know, and, uh, you know, I, I, I know I, I didn't call him, you know, for Rohan and all of that, but it is, uh, you know, I hope wherever he is, you know, in the ether, you know, I hope maybe he's getting the answers to all the questions that, you know, he wanted to ask on this level of existence. That's all I'll leave you guys with. Amen. Well said. Well said. Uh, always a pleasure, my man. Thanks for listening. Thanks for calling. Uh, tell your friend we said hi. Thanks for uh, chipping in there. Will do. And uh, you have a great night. Appreciate the call. Good Take care. That's Joe in Florida. A uh, good friend for a long time. You know him. You love him. And uh, again, uh, very in tune with the musical world. There's a lot of really weird stuff happening here. And like I said, uh, you know me. I like to kind of pick out these synchronicities that kind of flow through the zeitgeist. And I, this seems to be pretty, pretty hot in terms of uh, things that are really, really synchronistic and maybe even telling us, tipping their hand on what's happening. So what do you believe? Of course, not just with Havana Syndrome, real not. Otherwise, is there a guy in a car with a pew pew outside your house uh, pointing the thing at you while you sleep? You know, it seems, like I said, next level absurd. But uh, that's what they're suggesting now in the latest <laughs> Havana Syndrome reports. But then also you go all the way back to the song lyrics getting simpler, more repetitive, angry, self-obsessed, the controlled demolition of capitalism, as I've said. And of course, this whole bit of, uh, well, uh, able to detect 
even sort of a psychosis of sorts or beginning psychoses based on the genre of music we listen to. And, you know, this is wink, wink science. Now, what the hell does this mean? What's happening with this? I don't know, but to love to hear your thoughts. 702-957-1037. Click the Discord link at troubledminds.org. We'll put you on the show just like this. Thanks for the call, Joe. Let's go to uh, the Robert in Pennsylvania. Thanks for being patient, my man. You're on Troubled Minds. How are you, sir? Go right ahead. Oh, I am you, Joe. Uh, he's a DJ. He can uh, in, in this today's society, he can he can pick his own music, like the same music, because uh, he's not under any corporate uh, pressure. All right. I I used to DJ at a local radio station back in the uh, uh, 68, 69, 70, 71, uh, and it was a blast. It was so much fun. All right. Uh, but what's hap- what we're dealing with in, in our modern society is that there's like six radio, big corporate radio uh, uh, corporations. And uh, the DJs, it must be the most boring gig in the world because everything's on a loop. They're told what to play. Um, and and I, anyway, outside of serious radio, um, I can, you know, Clear Channel and all the rest of them are, are are just pretty much junk. It's it reminds me of when MTV used to be MTV. All right, I mean it was a music channel, all right, and then they sold it to the to a corporation, all right, a bunch of I think a bunch of hedge funds or something, and somebody bought it, some corporate bought it. Entities that was it uh, the same as Comedy Central that station that network, um, and they destroyed it. The corporations got their dirty little hands on it, and and, and now it's nothing but a reality type show. You know, uh, channel. There's no real MTV anymore, and and MTV was spectacular back in the day. It was good. It was You're right. It was wonderful. Yeah. Late eighties. It was good. Uh, like Dire Straits said, so used to sing, uh, give me my MTV. It was beautiful. And a lot of good, good, talented artists came out of that. And then it just, they just flitted it away. It's, it's, it's amazing how people, such, such creative people, who create something astonishing, something beautiful, all right? And then the corporations, oh, we want that, all right? And they grab it. They think they're going to make a lot of money off it, and all they do is they destroy it because they don't have the kind of creativity that created it in the first place. Yeah, they don't have that kind of frame of mind. Yeah, you know? which is which is part of the problem. I, I, there's a meme, you know, we talk about memes and you know meme magic and this type of thing. I, I'm sure we've probably all seen some version of this where there's a meme where it says. That in the old days, it's got like a picture of Tom Petty or something. Ugly people used to make pretty music. And now pretty people make ugly music. It's like they've inverted the entire thing. And the most important part beyond the marketing of, you know, you know, some teeny bopper that's wearing a too tight whatever. It's like uh, the, the music is the thing that resonates and it gets played in the airwaves and goes to the top of the I iTunes charts. And But it's horrible. I mean, the music is just for the most part, I, 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 not all of it. That was on my mind when I was listening to the show, too. All right. Uh, it seems like uh, not for so much for the male uh, bands, all right, uh, at all. Uh, but uh, but but the huge the huge singers, the huge the huge female singers, all right. They can't go on stage without at least uh, having half, you know, stripped down to basically almost nothing, all right. And and if there were any good, if they was really talented, they wouldn't have to do that. Yeah, exactly. It, it comes down to the marketing is first and the music is second, which, of course, is the antithesis of what music should be, because we put headphones on and listen to when we're taking a walk. You know, I mean, that's the wildest part. And also the most insidious part if we're talking about sort of these control mechanisms. Now, go ahead. What else you got? But of course, uh, if you got a take on Havana syndrome, I'd love to hear that as well. I do. I do. I, and, and, and it's a two thing. One thing. I, I saw part of that 60 minute show you were talking about. And I've always been skeptical, all right? Uh, and I'll tell you why. Um, they've blamed Russia, or claimed Russia was responsible for so many things over the last, what, uh, 10, 12 years? Uh, and it turned out not to be true. You know, it's like calling uh, crying wolf all this, all this time. It makes me not want to believe 
you know, Russia is involved in this because they they've always, you know, I think that if if, if, uh, if, if you know they're going to what they, I think they're tr- anywhere they're going to try to blame the the bridge that collapsed from the cargo ship on the Russians too. It just seems like everything that goes wrong or is a or is a problem. Uh, it, it, it's it's Putin, and I'm sick of it. I really am because you know a lot of it has proved to be nothing but propaganda, and then they want you to say you know, they want to put this 60 Minutes with their mouthpiece, the news media, their mouthpiece, put this across, all right, like they've been doing with all the other stuff, uh, and 60 Minutes is nothing but another mouthpiece for for, for the uh, military industrial complex too, and, and and we're supposed to sit back and say and trust them and believe it. They killed that. Yeah, I, I right. agree. That's that's when I when I saw this. That's when my tinfoil tingled. When I was like, "Really, Russia?" It seems like every damn. You're right. Everything damn thing is Russia these days because, of course, the Ukraine situation and our propaganda is trying to get us to fund that as much as possible because we th- still think it's 1987 and Ukraine is Afghanistan. And let me tell you what, it's not. It's 2024 and it is two different situations. And you know it, and I know it. And look, we, these same ideas that used to work, this is not the same thing anymore. We can't just pump money into problems and expect them to resolve themselves on the back end when somebody goes bankrupt. Because as we've talked about you and I before, the one to go bankrupt next time is going to be us. You can't fund all the wars all the time. And uh, it's unfortunate this is where we're at, but uh, it's just, uh, it, it's horrific. It's horrific that everything is Russia, it, it, Russia, it, Russia it, all the time. It's, it's, it's why the orange man's going to get reelected. All right. Because and the, 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 the overwhelming, and that's both parties, both, both voters, both in the, both in the one cult and the other cult uh, are, are just tired of this Ukrainian thing. And while, while we've got, uh, and then we've got all these, uh, uh, they want to call them immigrants, all right? And we're and we're funding them to the hilt. We're, we're we're paying the pensions of people and the salaries of people over in Ukraine, and our own country is going to hell. It's you know it's it's crumbling before our eyes. Nobody's you know, it's like they don't care about our country. They don't care about us. Uh, there's it's like something some international thing has taken over. Um, you know the United States of America, as well as other parts of the world, and is running it. Not our, not the people we elected. Are the people we elected are just bought out and and doing their bidding? Well, I I, I don't want to get into it because this is about music, and I do want to talk sure. about, uh, you know, uh, music has always been used to influence people to do something. Uh, when we were in World War II, we had all that patriotic music. Uh, when John, uh, you know, in the Civil War, when Johnny comes marching home, that sort of stuff, uh, that encouraged people to support the wars, right? And it was effective, very effective. Um, then the first time that there was any real rebellion against that kind of militaristic, patriotic propaganda music was in the 60s. All right, when all that was the first time there was really music that was popular that was protest music. And it was very effective. It stopped the Vietnam War. It had a large part of doing so. But right now, the corporations, you know, the, 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 the ones that create the albums or you create the music and put, uh, uh, you know, who, they, they, they tell them what they're going to sing. They they give them the music outside of I guess Taylor Swift. They give them the music and say, "Yeah, you're going to sing this. All right, you're going to sing this." Um, there's very few that are uh, creative music writers who write their own music, right? And uh, today it just announced that Taylor Swift is a billionaire, and I don't understand it. I really don't understand what the fascination is with her music because all it is is a pity party about boyfriends. Right. Come on. Come uh, on. And, and, L- let's be a little more generous than that. It's mostly that. <laughs> Not all of it. Okay. Mostly that. <laughs> mostly that. And, 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 but if, haven't you noticed you, you, I, I, the old country western? All right. The, the Johnny Cash's, uh, the, the, uh, you know, the Reeds, the, 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 all, the, the, those are songs that are legendary that you can play over and over again today. And still enjoy the old country uh, legends, right? Hank Williams, that sort of stuff. 
Um, but you take today's country music, right? And it all sounds alike. Yeah, it's the same. It's, it's the same chord progressions. Yeah, just a slightly different keys. Uh, uh, watch. Uh, I think we talked about this previously. Uh, Rick Beato, B E A T O, on uh, YouTube, and he talk, he talks about exactly that. How like uh, some of these uh, country pop stars were uh, grotesquely embarrassed when uh, all the award ceremonies had uh, the same chord progressions for the same damn songs, <laughs> which is just absolutely yeah. nuts. Yeah, it's nuts. And, and most of them, and most of them come from New Jersey. Yeah, when, when oh, you mean yeah, you mean with the southern draw? I'm a real country. I'm, I'm yeah. a real, real Tennessee, and I'm a real uh, Memphis guy. I'm, 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 I'm from the Texas. No, he's from New Jersey. <laughs> but the thing is, their music is being given to them, being told, "This is what you're going to record." You know, in the old days, you know, the the artist, not all of them, but a good many of them, especially when they reach the peak. I uh, had control over that. I'm not singing that. I'm not doing that. All right? But not today. Because there's, there's, it, you can, it, as much as they, it, they, they, they last about maybe a, a year to two years, you know, as, a, you know, the, as the latest country artist or the latest uh, 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 pop music artist, and then they're gone. And I, and I think I find myself listening. I listen to serious radio a lot in the car, and, and I'm thinking to myself, uh, what's what what is the music of the turn of the century, of the 21st century, that people 20 years from now are going to really want to remember and listen to? That struck the chord that got them in the gut. And, and 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 at a piece at a time in their life when they when 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 they had some crisis or something. What song is going to be? What what music? What a recording artist? What songs are going to be memorable? And I can't. I, I there's a few. I'm not arguing that. <laughs> but there's not many. There's not many. I can imagine that uh, 20 years from now will be. Any good to listen to, and I, I was thinking also, um, cabaret, the, the 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 musical, the cabaret, right? And I'm thinking that was set in the World War II in in Nazi Germany. I I, I got to use that word because that's what it was, all right? And and that in that nightclub, and that strange atmosphere in there. And that strange music that's going on, and I'm thinking that's a lot today of what's going on today. It's very similar in in its way in, in the way it, way um, it, it is today. And another thing, when you're talking about microwaves, and, and that they may have somebody has microwave weapons that can uh, pierce somebody's mind and make them uh, sick or do something. What about uh, uh, 5G? Isn't that microwaves? Uh, I'm not sure it's exactly the same thing. I think the frequencies are, I don't know, I'm not a scientist, but uh, let's let's say that uh, there's been some studies that suggest it's not entirely safe, and I mean not just 5G, 4G, 3G, Wi-Fi, all the stuff. Like we, We've talked about this in the past quite a bit. That uh, it's one thing to say, hey, it's uh, you know, it's it's enough radiation. It's like taking a warm bath. So you could do it as much as you want with a Bluetooth Bluetooth headphone on your on your skull, and you'll never be damaged. Well, we're, we're about to find out because who tells you that? Well, who tells you that? You 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 know exactly who tells you that. It's the individuals selling it that fund the studies to say that. That's exactly who's saying it. So uh, we're we're gonna find out because Wi-Fi has been a thing for 25, 30 years. The last ten years more reliably, but uh, it's in every household. It's ubiquitous as hell. We're uh, surrounded by all the rest of this stuff. So we're, we're about to find out. And notice is another thing that uh, they're not talking about uh, as maybe a link to this. And I'm not suggesting there is. I'm saying let's squint your eyes and maybe. They're also saying that people are getting, uh, young people are getting cancer at uh, unprecedented rates, specifically oh, colon, I've noticed that. Specifically colon cancer lot. and some other things. So it's like, wait a minute now, what's actually happening here? And like I said, I'm not a doctor and a causation, correlation, all this stuff, and uh, all, all the uh, disclaimers apply. But it does make you wonder what the hell's actually happening, right? Yes, it does. I, I I agree with you. I've certainly picked up on that myself. Let me ask you a question. Do you have a microwave oven in your house? I do, but I rarely use it. 
All right. But when you do use it, do you stand close to it? No, well, no, he- no hell no. Walk away? <laughs> well, yeah, why would you stand close to it? <laughs> is, there, is, there something, is there something in the back of your mind that tells you, I don't think I should stand close to this thing. I'm just going to back, you know, or some sort of subconsciousness that warns you to don't, don't, don't stand next to the doggone thing. While it's while it's while it's co- while it's radiating or microwaving your food. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I, I think I think that's old uh, old wisdom there because I think the the original microwave ovens weren't so safe as safe. Again, we're told. So uh, yeah, uh, I, I do stand not next to it when it's operating. I'll tell you that. That's for sure. <laughs> well said. <laughs> I, I, I bet you, and I bet you most people don't. Most people don't. Ooh. So uh, but, but, so so. What are the three questions you were asking me earlier? Uh, just how much of this? Who's leading whom? Meaning that uh, so are uh, is the music with the the weird lyrics again over the last forty year forty years, uh, getting simpler and more repetitive, angry and self obsessed because of the zeitgeist, feeding sort of despair and the artists are echoing it back, or is this music being uh, perfectly curated genre wise as we described and uh, perfectly selected uh, algorithmically to put into the zeitgeist and cause this exact type of feedback loop, or is it uh, some combination thereof? That's a, was probably the main question tonight. And uh, Havana Syndrome, of course, you, you already talked about. But yeah, a lot of ways to look at this. But that's basically the premise of I this. Think that, I, think, I think that's a self-answered question. Of course it is. Uh, of course all that's true. All right? Um, but it's a funny thing about life and about history. Everything repeats itself. Every era. Right now, I, I look out and I see all these, all these, you know, it's like 30, 30 below zero and I see a lot of men in my neighborhood walking around in shorts. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, that's the 50s. That's the 50s. That's the 50s repeating itself. Right? And I'm thinking the 60s is coming up. And the reason the 60s is coming up all over again, and the protest music and all that, like Ukraine is going to be part of it. All right, because you know, if it keeps going on, they're going to try to constrict uh, our own young people into into entering into that conflict, and that's Vietnam all over again. That's what they learned, by the way. That's what they le- the government learned. Don't have a draft, right? It was a draft that killed the military industrials, uh, you know, wealth machine in Vietnam, right? So they learned that. But if push comes to shove, it looks like there's there's even some talk about it, right? Certainly, Great Britain's talking about doing it, right? I'm saying that's going to add, uh, put the protest movement back in there all over again, and of course the economy and the fact that these young people can cannot leave their parents' home, all right? I mean, when I was that age, when I was their age, I had no trouble, you know, once I graduated high school, getting a job. And moving out, finding a nice apartment, a one-bedroom apartment. I didn't need a two-bedroom apartment. I had a one-bedroom apartment and getting started, all right? They can't even do that. You know, a one-bedroom apartment is beyond their their ability to finance with the, with the kind of low-wage jobs that are out there. We were manufacturing. We were the uh, the, the number one manufacturing country in the world. That's where the good jobs were. All right, and our politicians sold us, sold those jobs over to China, gave them all the way over there, moved it over there, because the corporations wanted that cheap labor. Anyway, I, I, I'm going on and on, but I'm saying, I think that's what's coming up. I think the music's going to change. I think this 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 silly, forgetful uh, dance music. All right, and and if you notice, most of the female singers are singing about uh, have have a chip on their shoulder. Uh, uh, you know, with lyrics about uh, you know a nasty boyfriend or or, or 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 some message to men, you know that 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 is not very polite, all right? There's a that that that, and I see that coming on now. I see women, the younger women, rejecting all that and saying this doesn't work, all right? I mean, we're they want to go back to the days of of of, of uh, June Cleaver. I'm seeing that happening. Yeah, it's, it, uh, it's certainly around me. All right, they, 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 it's a better. If it's a, you know, there's. Well, I'm saying the. I think that the protest music is coming back. It started there for a while there, uh, back in the, uh, like the mid '80s, 
all right, and then it kind of died off. But the, the corporations, as long as they're Spotify, and I, but by the way, um, I have actually started, you know, started some years ago, uh, the algorithm on YouTube. Uh, every once in a while, it throws something at me of some singer, all right, some, you know, some, some band or whatever, and I follow a number of them now, all right, and they're not out there, you know, on, on you know, on, on TV or, or, you know, they're not known, they're big, 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 but they do go around, travel around the country, but I, I'm, I, they're beautiful music, I mean, I, I love beautiful music, I love good old rock and roll, right, and I see stuff like that, I, I you know, uh, hear stuff like that. I'm going to pay attention to it, and and I, but you see those kind of people that are on YouTube that are getting an audience like that, they're not going to be picked up by the corporations because they're you know they're creators themselves. They create their own music. They create their own style. It's like it, and 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 that's somewhat independent. And and you see what happens when corporations buy these these creators up. They they spit them out. I, I'm I'm just rambling on, but I really think that the next ten years coming up, the next ten years over, the, and I think it's starting now. I think you're going to see a, a, a tremendous change in the way music comes out because now because these these people can be these these creators can be independent. They can be independent of the corporations and just override them, whether it's through Spotify or YouTube. Or, or or whatever, um, they have the means to do that, and I think that we should pay attention to that because I think that's where it's going to come from, where the the change in this it isn't even bubblegum music out there anymore. Even bubblegum bubblegum music had its charm, <laughs> but this, the music the music that's out there now is just the beat, the beat, the beat, the beat, the beat, without any meaning, without anything that touches the heart. That's the way I see it. I'm not saying it's all like that, of course, but most of it is. Get off my lawn, Robert. And most of it, that's why most of it is forgetful. Yeah, well, and repetitive. Again, back to that whole bit, you know, like you have one hook and you just repeat it for two minutes, three minutes. It's it's strange. What's the news media do? What's same the thing. news media do? Same thing. Repeat, 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 over and over again, the same thing, the same script, over and over and over again for days at a time, because that's what they learned from from the fascist in Nazi Germany, is that if you repeat something off a lie, often enough, over and over and over again, it gets through to somebody's brain and they think that it sits in there and it, it becomes the truth in, in, in the people's minds. But people are on to that now. And it's not working. It's not working. And I like what Joe said about uh, disaster capitalism. It's coming to an end. All right? There's, there's something different coming up, and I think it's really, really going to be good. I really think that there's going to be some real good changes coming down the line because these these these, uh, these creeps that have been doing what they've been doing for the last 20 years um, they don't they've lost control and I think that uh, I think it's going to be better I think the music's going to be better I think the music's going to be better because the corporations are going to lose the ability to manipulate it. Let's hope so. Let's hope so. I'm with you. Uh, cross your fingers on that one that maybe we have a resurgence of uh, uh, give us back what is ours because I think we definitely need it. Okay. I've been on long enough and I apologize for that. You're fine. Great but, call. Uh, you know, music is important to me. It's important and, to all of us. I, I, just don't like the, I, I just don't like the way it's been corrupted these days. Amen. A fantastic call. As always, uh, you're welcome anytime. You know where to find us. Have a fantastic night and we'll talk yes, to you soon. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good night. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. So Robert in Pennsylvania, you know him, you love him. The Robert, he's got a book. Uh, he's, he's writing more. Uh, go check it out. Links in the description, troubledminds.org forward slash friends. It says Robert's book here. Check it out. Yeah, you could probably order it tonight. Have it on Amazon on your doorstep tomorrow morning. And uh, he, again, full disclosure, as I always say, he sent me a couple copies. I did read it and uh, he didn't twist my arm or pay me or anything. It is good. It is good. It's short stories, very troubled mind style. And uh, like I said, he's a, become a mentor of mine and a good friend. And uh, he's a talented author. Uh, go check that out if you haven't. Uh, many of us uh, here in the, in the fam have purchased that book and checked it out. And uh, the feedback I hear from everybody that's read it, uh, I'll say it's really good. So there you go. Uh, amazing stuff. Uh, thank you for the call. And that's exactly why we talk to each other, because you don't know what's coming next. And maybe, just maybe, Robert's on to something in the sense that 
let's say the circular version version of this in terms of let's say whatever uh, the time frame is that uh, maybe we get uh, the protest songs coming back and maybe that's what kind of comes into vogue and in, in the vein of what he was just saying there uh, in the spirit of what he's saying I mean uh, do do take some time to find some independent artists I, look I know you guys do that because you're here that's what I am that's what we are that's what this community is we're not going to get picked up by uh, I don't know like iHeart Radio or something because that we're, we're anti-establishment at least in the most basic sense okay not to not to you know anarchists or anything i mean define the terms as you will but i mean we're definitely anti-establishment in the sense of hey let's think about what's happening to us and how what we can do to change it and nobody's buying that i mean no no major corporation is going to be like like apple's not going to buy us and go all right uh go ahead micah you're now funded and uh got us backing you up uh, and tell us how terrible apple is and major corporations that are ruining the world right it's not going to happen anyway uh, go go find some independent creators and do follow them, as Robert said. Amazing stuff. We're talking tonight about, I'm calling this an unwilling instrument, which is you, which is me, which is us. Bardic code, which of course would be the bards of old and the code of new. And of course, what the future might bring. Love to hear your thoughts. 702-957-1037. This is Troubled Minds. I'm Michael Strange. We've got David on the road coming up. Thanks for being patient, my friend. And of course, your calls as well. Be right back. More on the way. Welcome back to Troubled Minds. I'm your host, Michael Strange. We're streaming on YouTube, Rockfin, Rumble, Twitter, and Twitch. We are broadcasting live on the Troubled Minds Radio Network. That is KUAP Digital Broadcasting. Tonight we're taking your calls as I'm, I'm calling this the un, an unwilling instrument. That's you. The Bardic Code is the Bard of Old and the Code of New and using music as a weapon. And of course, lots of things in the news cycle that suggest new science, or at least maybe old science resurfacing as new science, describing and suggesting that maybe just maybe there's something happening here that's not quite clear if you catch my meaning i don't really know no answers for me but just uh, kind of looking at things and trying to see what's happening in the news cycles as part of the you know that synchro mystic life as i say that uh, that you know kind of being able to spot the patterns beneath the noise of uh, the propaganda because there's definitely a story to be told there and i'm still waiting uh, intently for the time we can get a real-time, uh, let's say, synchro-mystic uh, AI sort of scanning the news cycle and being able to be like, you know what, 85% of the news stories are all propaganda. Here's what seems to be really happening in sort of the larger sense, right? Imagine that. And it's like, blam, 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 and kind of gives you like three or four major themes of like the last 48 hours that aren't propaganda, that's going to be wild. And I think that's why they're moving very quickly to kind of tamp down AI because it's uh, at times they are changing. I'll tell you what. So anyway, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Uh, which is which is which began what? Which begat what? Right. In terms of, let's say, uh, the zeitgeist causing this despair to have us have songs that are you know getting simpler, more repetitive, angry and self-obsessed with the lyrics. Or is it the opposite where sort of a. Uh, instead of uh, it, it's we're being led into this somehow uh, by um, again music uh, music companies like uh, the Robert was saying that maybe they're hand selecting these things and only allowing certain styles and certain genres to make it to number one and number two in the top twenty charts or whatever because they want us to think or they want us to be impacted in certain ways. I don't know. Uh, of course, uh, that becomes uh, the question of many things. And let's uh, think about it. Let's talk about 702-957-1037. Click the Discord link at troubledminds.org. We'll put you on the show just like this. Let's go to uh, David on the road. Thanks for being patient, my man. Welcome back. You're on Troubled Minds. Uh, how are you, sir? Doing good. Can you hear me good? Yep. You sound good. Uh, you, you driving? I don't hear the oh. hum in the back. Yes, I am. Yep, I'm driving. Yep, I just passed a highway patrol that was, it was <laughs> making everybody slow down. He's searching out in the uh, field for somebody, and with his spotlight and uh, keeping everybody to slow down. It was kind of weird. Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> um, uh, you know, I I I know uh, Chat GPT GPT was uh, talked about the AI. You know, using uh, using that to make music and uh, lyrics and and um, and I, I actually um, created a song and then put it into Chat GPT and, 
and had it uh, spit out some stuff. And, and I, I was like, oh, okay, I could use this and then switch this around. And, and uh, you have that song. Uh, Rohan actually uh, used it to uh, change it up. But like I, I had like guitar riffs behind it, sound kind of like System of the Down. And, and it's the, uh, in the world of troubled minds, you know, at, at the montage. Okay, um, I do have that. And, uh, I do have that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sweet. I didn't know you uh, you had a hand <laughs> in that. That's pretty cool. So that a little that a uh, little bit that, of that's, that's AI AI composition and uh, collaboration with uh, David yeah. on the road. <laughs> that's sweet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he uh, he spit up the uh, lyrics and then you know edited them and yeah put it all together with some digital stuff behind it and it sounds great. Um, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> I think it's very possible that you know you could you could come up with something and put it into chat gpt and, and have something come out where you know you kind of you direct it to how you want it to come out and it, it creates this stuff that you know could be uh you know mind control you know it could do something like that i think um yes yeah. Yeah, I, I think on it's that pretty, one, pretty interesting. Yeah, incredibly interesting. I think on that personally, like I've I've fiddled with that myself and said, write me some lyrics regarding this and the style of this, and it totally does it right. But I'm not so sure. Let's let's say, for instance, just as a thought experiment here, let's say a particular band, band X Y Z, whatever there. There was, there was actually a band X Y Z, wasn't there? Okay, band A B C or right, band A B C. Uh, oh, they're gosh. they are creating actual true to form. DARPA style brainwash music. Okay. And they're, they're, it's in the lab and they, you know, do all this stuff and it's subliminal messages and the whole bit. Okay. I'm not so sure that chat GPT would be able to recognize that and then sort of do something in the style that would kind of emulate it. You know what I mean? I think we're not quite there yet, but, uh, so, so there's a kind of a chasm disconnect in my mind with that particular thing, but I don't think it matters much. Meaning that, uh, let's say in the larger sense, because I still think that, that we're, we're, uh, putting our feelings out in the zeitgeist based on what the zeitgeist is echoing back to us. And then chat GPT and these large language models are picking up on it because they're ingesting the volume of the internet every single day. So I think it does sort of echo back to the, to the, uh, the AI here, but uh, I'm not so sure they're able to go. They're able to be, Oh, there's an ABC band too. <laughs> Dear God, <laughs> all the bands. How about the uh, <laughs> OP? How about that? Is, is that a band? Anyway, go ahead, David. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Yeah, I know, right? All the acronyms, BTO, and all the old stuff, right? Um, yeah, um, I I uh, came across this movie years ago that was really uh, fascinating. It was, it was a thriller type of mystery, and it was uh, called Under the Silver Lake. And uh, in this movie, I'm not going to spoil it for anyone, but uh, it, it's it's uh, something that it's much like what we're talking about right now about you know music controlling and manipulating the populace and and, uh, and the artists that sing the songs that are given these songs to sing and it's like connected to the 27 club and and uh, just this movie uh, this this character in the movie uh, the um, main character uh, had like a girlfriend that went missing and he went to search for her and ends up going down this rabbit hole and finding finding this underground bunker and and finding a secret society and this this man that was was responsible for all these songs that were written that, that, uh, you know, from the, uh, LSD era, you know, of, uh, MK ultra, you know, you know, all that, all that stuff, you know, split personality, you know, kind of thing to, uh, you know, um, PTSD type of like catcher in a rye kind of thing, you know, where, where something is brought up like in a song to, to, uh, activate someone, that kind of stuff. Um, so it's, it's very, uh, I, I, it, it's all like declassified kind of stuff now. You know, MK Ultra is actually a, a real thing that actually happened, and uh, all the uh, manipulation of uh, people with LSD and all those uh, experiments that were done. And I'm sure uh, things like that still happen today, but you know, we don't know what they are. But uh, you know, just like the uh, the, the uh, what do you call it, the Havana Syndrome? You're talking about the uh, energy weapons. Uh, that could be, uh, you know, one and the same, uh, you know, it can, it might not be other countries. It might just be, uh, a project that's, uh, happening here in, in this country. Um, you know, I, you know, I don't like pointing finger, fingers because we don't really know, but yeah, it's, it, it's been done before. So yeah, I, I would, wouldn't put it past anyone doing, doing stuff again, experimenting on the populace. Yeah, there's um, a, and, and there's a tidal wave of sentiment with that regard as well. Like, uh, uh, we're not dumb anymore. 
I think I think that's the thing. You yeah. know, we're, we 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 went through the '80s, and I speak for myself because I was a kid. You know, what am I supposed to know? I don't. I, I didn't want to pick up a newspaper, and that was the only way to get news. Actually, I lied. I I, I did actually pick up newspapers to to kind of peel back to the the sports page and want, look at the box scores of the baseball games. <laughs> that's the only reason I ever picked up a newspaper. <laughs> but I mean, like, so so, and I think that's that's intentional, right? So meaning that uh, if you curate the information, so it's uh, you know only accessible through. Uh, the things that uh, they they allow, then it, the information is scant uh, that gets out to the population. And you know, what? when I got older, by the way, uh, and I started reading some of those old newspapers, I was like, uh, there is an unbelievable dearth of information in here. It's 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 really sort of cursory, uh, propaganda style garbage, and you you don't even know what the hell's happening based on the crap they're writing. And you can say that about today, journalists today, and all the rest, right? That's that's all still true. But they're they're you know sort of fracturing the zeitgeist and and, and, and fracturing realities by just making crap up. But in the old days, uh, they were all in lockstep, all the different media companies. And you know the older me now looks back at that and I go, dear God, this was in our face the entire time, and we weren't noticing. What is going on with the world, man? <laughs> anyway, sorry, sorry to interrupt your call. Go right ahead. Um, yeah, it reminds me of a friend I had. Uh, I, this is kind of off topic, but not really. I mean. It's uh, he grew up in the in the era of uh, Jimi Hendrix, and he was a kid. You know, he just was a huge fan. And one morning, he woke up from a dream, and he he dreamed that Jimi Hendrix had died. And about five minutes later, he hears it come across the radio, and uh, it just you know it just like wow, you know, it kind of shook him because you know he had that kind of deja vu kind of thing, you know, and uh, and it was just you know shook him to his core. But you know, it's it's odd and strange how how uh, how connected we are to music and to the people that produce it, make it, and uh, to have a dream like that, uh, you know, premonition. Uh, that's uh, it's it's a fascinating thing to be connected to to people that I mean I I don't even believe he ever met Jimi Hendrix, but uh, but his music affected him so much that that he had such a, a premonition to uh, know know his death before it was announced until. Uh, um, so that, that's, uh, uh, it's, it's a strange world. Absolutely. Which actually leads me into the other point. I forgot a point when we started here tonight. So I'll uh, do this after you get off the call, but it is basically as you're describing uh, us being connected to personalities in a cognitive way, meaning that, uh, the Jimi Hendrix bit or Janis Joplin or you name it, the 27 club, Kurt Cobain. I remember I was alive for that one when he passed away and uh, it was, a uh, you know, it, it was a shock. It was a shock to the zeitgeist, a shock to the system of, you know, it's sort of a generational artist that was really had the palm of the, uh, uh, the the world in the palm of their hands and it ended up uh, you know tragically gone uh, way too young it's a, a story as old as time it's unfortunate and it, it does seem to me that uh, again these cycles seem to repeat in a lot of ways um, what else you got regarding this uh, I'll, uh, I'll fill in the blanks real quick uh, after you're off the call here so you can uh, again uh, say whatever you got to say I'm not trying to uh, bogart the, the, the mic here I, I do enough oh, no. of that but yeah go ahead what no. else you got no, you got this. I, I'm. Uh, I, that's all I had to say. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate, appreciate the call. It. I appreciate the call. You were the best. Drive safe out there and uh, careful. Your truck was beeping at you. Uh, slap it back. <laughs> yeah. All well, the traffic's slowing down, so I get too close to somebody. The uh, the machine tells you, oh, too close. Beep beep. Yep. Slow down. Slow down. <laughs> the AI. <laughs> the AI is like, behave, behave, David. <laughs> nice. Exactly. Nice. All right. I appreciate All the right, call. Thanks. Drive you safe. Take care. Drive safe. We'll talk to you soon. You too. Thanks. Uh, that's David on the road. You know him. You love him. A uh, good friend for a long time. Uh, check it out. He's got a YouTube channel. Links in the description down below. Troubledminds.org forward slash friends. It's, uh, it says follow David here. Uh, check out his YouTube ch uh, channel. He's a truck driver, as uh, you know. And uh, as I always say, that our truck drivers don't get enough respect. They're out there grinding their guts out, not sleeping at home and all the rest of that to bring, you know, grocery uh, grocery stuff to people, uh, you know, miles and miles away that will never really appreciate them directly. So uh, it is sort of that part of that invisible process, as I always say. So uh, do give him a follow at troubleminds.org forward slash friends. Follow David here. Please check out his YouTube channel. Uh, talented musician and uh, some road shenanigans uh, from his uh, journeys. Uh, go check it out. And so what I wanted to add to that, and as he described sort of that Jimi Hendrix sort of connection. Uh, the weird part is, and I uh, skipped it when I was kind of going through my my notes here. I should have actually done this properly, but this is this is sort of the the the, the missing piece of the puzzle here, right? And it's this: 
A simple cognitive tendency has surprisingly profound implications for the spread of biased information. Now, what does information have to do with music, Mike? Well, music is information, guys. It's the same thing. It's ones and zeros. It's data in the most basic sense. And, well, here we are talking about it and considering it and listening to it and consuming it and, you know, get off my lawn, kid, and talking about uh, whatever crap is on the radio these days. And, again, the Robert had it right in that uh, there's a lot of really great independent artists out there that will never be picked up and pressed into onto the radio because, well, they're not uh, sort of uh, manipulated easily like the Disney kids. You, you get what I mean by that. Anyway, so listen to this. This is wild. And this is also brand new from a couple months back, a week and a half, or sorry, month and a half or so. Check it out. Have you ever considered that our brains might be more receptive to learning from people we like compared to those we dislike? Oh, you don't say. A recent study conducted by researchers in cognitive neuroscience reveals just that. Our ability to learn and make connections between different pieces of information is significantly influenced by our feelings towards the person presenting the information. Essentially, if the information comes from someone we like, we find it easier to remember and link together compared to when it comes from someone we dislike. Think about that that uh, Sean Hannity example I made earlier. Now think of all the pop stars of today, where they're all, again, like I said, scantily clad, everybody's great looking, all the rest of the stuff, right? Where in the old days, you know, Tom Petty wasn't the, the best the best looking guy. I mean, you know, I'm a great big Tom Petty fan. Stand me up at the gates of hell and I won't back down, right? Coming from a little guy with a guitar, the Telecaster, it's so good, right? But, but still, you get it, right? It, we used to to have you know ugly people making beautiful music now we have beautiful people making ugly music why we'll go back to exactly this case well to exhibit five let's say which is exactly this uh, we're, we're more apt to be susceptible to information from people that we like and of course attractive people certainly are easy to like right hey everybody loves brad pitt hey j-lo yeah hey what's up you know what i mean and this is exactly the point here. So they've they've turned it on its head where we're not really dealing with good music. We're dealing with good looking people. And the good looking people are, again, back to this, the last 40 years, song lyrics getting simpler, more repetitive, angry, and self-obsessed in this study. Again, which is which? Is the zeitgeist leading or is this algorithmically being manipulated to pump this garbage into the zeitgeist? I don't know. You tell me. Love to hear your thoughts. Uh, thanks, for, uh, thanks for prompting me on that, David. I completely forgot about that aspect of this, but that's exactly the point. Once you sort of manufacture a completely phony persona and put it out there, and uh, even auto-tune and all the crap that's going on now, music's easier than it's ever been to make. And if you don't believe me, Go back to 1987 or 1990 and try and spend any amount of money and do any kind of recording in any kind of equipment. It's It, it was incredibly expensive. It was still using state-of-the-art back in like 1988 or 90 was like, like a, a, a studio four track that you could use regular cassette tapes because you could, you know, put, do, do all this. And anyway, it was absurd. It was the, the, the actual level of, you know, sort of journeyman or beginner production was, was absurd. Now, you know, you got a, you, you got a computer, you, you got as many tracks as you want. It's endless. It's endless. You got the synthesizers that make, you know, you could, you could play your guitar and make play it like a piano. Now you can play your piano like a guitar. I mean, Hey, Hey, come on now. It's easier than ever. And still, and yet, and still, we have beautiful people making ugly music. Uh, for the most part. Again, like I said, the stuff that's being pumped into the zeitgeist. The, call it zeitgeist trash. How about that? And I mean that in the nicest way. Because, of course, there's going to be talented people out there that are manipulated, that are controlled, all the rest. And anyway, you get my my drift. 702-957-1037. Click the Discord link at troubledminds.org. Lots of questions tonight. Does this trace back to Havana Syndrome or not? Let's go to Amy in Utah. What's up, my friend? You're on Troubled Minds. Welcome back. Go right ahead. Um, hey, uh, I remember I was, uh, I was a DJ back in the, in the eighties and nineties. And, you know, we, we heard, uh, about this hit wizard kind of thing. And I believe it was Capitol Records that was doing it. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but it was, somebody had written some kind of algorithm where you just plug in a few notes and and a few lyrics and it would it would crank it out and clean it up for you and basically turn it into a hit and um it was 
only certain people were having it used on them and it made them like superstars and this was in the 90s you know um but i remember uh some information going around the radio stations at that time about this particular process that they were using and i thought at the time no that can't be that can't be true that they they can't do that that's that's not music um music comes from the soul and comes from the heart and you know it doesn't come from some uh machine that just spits it out and uh i'm finding out more and more that yeah it it actually does it's uh it's actually a lot of it's fake yeah well that doesn't surprise me so heartbroken yeah, that that's one of those things that uh, it's been it's been for a long time. Even sort of in the you know in, in the early '80s, late '70s, there was that whole uh, you know they sort of had the ghost performers on the tracks that would you know the background singers were actually kind of singing lead and you know this type of stuff. It was you know uh, manufactured. It was very manufactured to be that way because they had more talented people as session musicians than the actual you know names themselves. And that wasn't, of course, the rule. There's a lot of very talented people. Don't don't get me wrong on this. But I'm just saying that uh, it's definitely been sort of a smoke and mirror situation for a very long time in that regard. And I don't think much has changed except, well, uh, until recently, now we have AI music entirely. And this is this is going to be interesting to, to, to kind of pay attention to this because a lot of the AI uh, stuff is scraping the music that were, you know, the, the history of music. And a lot of the modern artists that are super rich are like, screw that, like, you can't train your your AI on my music, right? I mean, and let's be fair, by the way. Let's throw Billie Eilish out and Katy Perry out and whatever. They're all their contemporaries, and I'm not saying those two are the same. I'm, I'm again, picking some very popular artists. Katy Perry a little ways back, uh, Billie Eilish more recently. Uh, you can throw the names in there as you like. Let's say throw out the last 20 years of music is kind of my point, right? In, in its entirety. And uh, you're going to tell me you're not going to get great music by scraping everything from, you know, let's say the year 2000 back to the beginning of music that we have recorded music. I mean, of course, we're going to get great things. And it doesn't really matter if, you know, Billie Eilish is involved or not. She's just hella mad and wants a cut because she's going to feel uh, these all these artists that are super rich and famous are going to feel slighted. Like, OK, now anybody can make, you know, wink, wink, great music. Well, what comes next times, that's for sure. You don't have to touch that. It was just sort of an aside here. That's uh, something we'll keep an eye on as this develops because the, the powerful artists are super pissed and uh, mounting a massive lawsuit. So we'll see how that plays out. What else you got? Go ahead. Um, not, not much. I, I just, uh, I just wanted to throw that out there and, and, you know, just something that I remembered from my days in radio and uh, how, you know, disappointed I was in the music industry as a whole, just for, you know, for basically bullshitting everybody. Oh, can I say that? I'm sorry if I... No, you're fine. We're not, not, we're, we're, not, to, but. we're not technically on the radio. We're on our own radio station, so we can say whatever the hell we want. But yeah, you're fine. No, I, but, but I think notoriously that's been one of the, the main arguments against the music industry it was it was so... It was kind of a monolith, even though they had like three major publishers. It was still, you know, a very, very, very much pay to play, very much who you know, whose son you are, you know, uh, who's in the family, this type of stuff. Right. I mean, it was it was, a, as they say, a good old boys club, even back in the day. And the young people they gave a chance, they would even put under contract and then charge them for all the recording time and stuff. And then they have to put them on tour as like indentured servants to like pay off their debt to the record companies by touring. And then once they, you know, kind of either made the decision to write them off and, you know, not renew, uh, they basically had uh, just made a bunch of money on them, uh, whether the, the thing hit or not. And then they just release them and then, you know, uh, again, start over. And it's ridiculous. And that's the way it used to work. Very casting couch esque, if you know what I mean. Yes, very much so. And, um, you know, my my dad was, was a musician. He was a really good musician. Um, he actually backed uh, Johnny Cash a couple of times. And because um, one of his house band was, or one of, one of his band members wasn't able to be there. So my dad, they called my dad. Um, and... Uh, yeah, my my dad got an offer 
to work at the Grand Ole Opry to be part of the house band. And um, he turned it down. And, uh, you know, he said that wasn't the kind of life that he wanted for his family. And, um, you know, I got to I got to give mad props to him for that because he knew what it was all about before he even got involved. And uh, he wasn't about to take his family down that road. And, um, you know, so mad props to my dad for that. But, um, you know, it's it is exactly that it's a it's a casting couch too you know it's uh in rare cases it was how good you were very rare cases um but most of it was uh like you said pay to play and um you know it's now with independent studios and um you know self publishing and that kind of thing it's a whole new ball game, and uh, you know, I one of the one of the artists that I think right now is absolutely fabulous is uh, Bon Iver. Um, I think he's incredible, and uh, you know, he's. I don't think he's one that would have made it uh, had he had to audition because he just wasn't. He's not that kind of a musician. And, um, but his music is amazing. And so, yeah, I, I definitely see a difference in the way music has progressed from the nineties to now. Um, but some of it's good. Some of it's bad. You got to take them both together. Yeah, of course. And, and, not, and look, we're, we're again, we're a little jaded, you know, a little bit older. I'm speaking for myself, not you. And, and we've seen these musical cycles kind of come and go like Robert was describing. But let's not let's not fool ourselves. Back in 1985, there was a lot of crappy music, too. So, I, so, I mean, some things never change. And they're, they're, Oh, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. So, I like I said, I, I mean, if you want to call me a crank, I know you're not going to. But, I mean, you know, anybody out there listening, if you're like, oh, this guy's just a crank, he's crapping on new music, I, I don't know about that. It's kind of my point is that there was a lot of crappy music in 1985 as well. <laughs> That's really what I wanted to say about that. Some things never change, and crappy music will continue to be made, including by myself, by the way. I'm also a crappy musician in my own right, and I've written plenty of crappy songs um, that are remaining unreleased <laughs> for exactly that reason. Uh, amazing stuff. I got well, it. And, and, go, go ahead, go ahead. You know, let's not forget how 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 bad Devo was. I mean, come on. If if we really want to point fingers, that's where the first one goes. In my opinion. Sure. Fair enough. I mean, I think I think uh, uh, you know a little sub subjectivity in the taste there. We're going to get a bunch of different people saying a bunch of different things in that regard. But I, I do respect your opinion there. Uh, before I let you go, uh, you got to take on the Havana syndrome bit. Do you think this is real? You think this is Russia? Do you think this is propaganda? And you think it has anything to do with sort of music? Notice how the two things could be similar in terms of a you know directed energy weapon, meaning uh, sound waves, like a subsonic sound waves. Well, I remember hearing about a thing called uh, Donnerspreck, which was a weapon that was actually used during the Second World War by the um, Nazi regime. And basically, it means thunder speak is what it tra how it translates. Um, and it was something that they that they would use very similar to AI and and uh, voice perfecting. And it was some kind of technology that they would add to the speakers when Hitler was giving a speech. And it made him sound more, um, well, it gave him a deeper tone and um, made him sound more sharp and uh it enhanced his voice and so yeah i think i think there is something to it um i don't know exactly what or in what direction to follow it but yeah i definitely think there's something to it Fair enough. I, I don't know exactly the answers either, because if I did, I'd just be like, here are the answers, guys, and then they'd probably come and arrest me. 
But uh, I mean, and I only say that halfway tongue in cheek because one, I really don't know the answers. And I do really mean if I did, they would probably arrest me. <laughs> That's that was the joke. Not uh, that I letting on that I know something I don't. I don't really know. But anyway, yeah, amazing call. And, and I think that's exactly the point we need to consider. Uh, don't forget 1985 kind of sucked too in its own way. It, musically, there's a, there's a lot of good stuff, but there's a lot of crap they pushed on the radio as well. So uh, yeah, yeah, uh, well said, all the rest. And uh, thank you for the call. Unless you got anything else to add. Thanks. Uh, nope, I, nothing else. I just wanted to say thanks for sticking with what you're doing and and making this world a, a more informed place. Amen. Appreciate that very much. Thanks for uh, appreciating it, and thanks for contributing, and thanks for calling, and uh, always a pleasure. We'll talk to you next time. Have a great night. Okay, have a good night. You as well. Uh, AB in Utah, a good friend for a long time now, and of course, uh, always a great call. That's exactly the point of this. This is why we talk to people, because you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what's coming. You don't know, again, uh, you know, we'll we'll let her off the hook for the Devo comment, right? Uh, Somebody said over in the Rumble chat, ooh, Devo, ouch. (laughs) But yeah, I mean, that's the deal. That's the deal is that everybody's got going to have a little bit different taste and that's okay. But I think when you boil it down to the aspect of, um, you know, genres and, you know, sort of uh, fracturing ideas and, you know, being able to kind of cause a particular psychoses with uh, music, uh, we become a completely different animal uh, collectively. And that's, uh, that's why this is important to me. And that's why all these ideas are important. And that's why we should consider them and talk about them. And that's that. Love to hear your thoughts. 702-957-1037. Talking about an unwilling instrument, I'm calling this Bardic Code. Bardic music from the days of old. Modern code. And of course, the future and what music might look like in 20 years. Let's go to Andy. What's up? Thanks for uh, chipping in and uh, hanging through work. And uh, you're on Troubled Minds. How are you, my friend? Go right ahead. What do you know about this stuff regarding music and um, control? How are you? I'm fine, Matthew. How's everything on your side? Uh, doing good. You got a ton of background noise. I'm not sure if you can fix that, but uh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, I'm not working the minute. I'm working on the shop floor. Uh, basically, what, you, what you're facing is something along the lines of frequency and resonance when it comes to the human brain. Now, you've got music, you've got your, your basic beats and everything else. This is my opinion. If you're going to turn around and try and inspire anyone to do anything, anyone to do anything, it's easy to set up the uh, neural linguistics of basically uh, repetition. Your energy weapon that you're on about, for the same, unfortunately, you've got a lot, a lot of well, facts. Uh, some, some frequencies are actually banned by the Geneva Convention because they interfere with the alpha and beta waves of the human brain. That uh, also comes into something along the lines of light when it comes to strobos got the effect, which is when the frequency of light can actually induce epileptic fits. You've got that, you've got sound, which possibly might have a link into that. If you had to go with your energy weapon, that would be a microwave weapon, possibly linked in with the same sort of frequencies to the human brain. Thumb to speak, um, yes, if you go to infrasound, you can actually semi force feelings of dread or fear to try and instill whatever you want in the internal victim. Yeah, I still connected. yeah, uh, I hear you. Well said, well said. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot to it, unfortunately. You've got science and technology, all of it when married together, when you do frequencies and when you do music and when you do sound, it can also cause a hell of a lot of problems with a lot of issues. Some of them seizures, feelings of dread, headaches. It just depends on really what you want to do. If you look at the new microwave weapons that are actually coming onto the market, some of them heat your skin. If you go to a low frequency and do something else, you can actually go on YouTube and find a guy that's made a microwave one come to the microwave. You can find a guy who made a laser bazooka and he can actually manipulate the frequencies of that. Normal people can actually do this is why it's coming out onto the market in the net. Me, I've got a basic background still. Basic background in electrical engineering and electronics. This is the sort of thing we were telling us when we were being trained. The frequencies can have a very adverse effect on people, including magnetics. It just depends on what you want to do and how you want to do it. Yeah. Okay. So, so what is your take on? So, so do you think that they're pumping this into the zeitgeist, and we're we're echoing it, or is it the other way around? Like, what's happening? Are we being manipulated through uh, the the actual social pressure to create this music, or are we being manipulated to? Uh, 
by by the entities to sort of echo it with a manipulated algorithmic pressing garbage music into the zeitgeist. What's your take on that? In all honesty, mate, true to all wise, it's all of the above. You've got not one person that's doing this, not one group that's doing this, and all unfortunately is going through a cacophony of symphony of absolute chaos. And unfortunately, we're just picking through it at the minute. Well said, and I and I think that would be my take as well. To be honest, I I don't think there's one one entity here causing all this stuff. I think there's a lot of things happening and manipulating each other, and then we're sort of uh, feedback making echoes of this same sort of a uh, sound or or yeah everything else. What else you got? Go ahead. I want to say the uh, all forms of advertising, even the subliminal stuff in the cartoons in the 1960s, going all the way up to the 1970s, where you ended up with single flashes of imagery to, to get people to buy things. The human populace had been programmed over a long period of time for various things. It is groups on groups of things and people doing various other bits and bobs. You've just got to take a step and come forward. You'll get your bear in the scene, you know. Go down until the top of all mine scrub it hole. It's uh, it's a deep pit down in the Hello? I hear you, but we hear a ton of the background noise too. Ah, sorry, I'm trying to avoid from the speaker. <laughs> More music. Uh, basically, as I say, it's a very deep rabbit hole we go down when it comes down to this. When you try and look into various things, you just got to steal yourself and take a step into the breach, unfortunately. But it will all come out in the wash eventually. Amen. Amen. Well said. Thank you for sharing those links. I'll, uh, I'll uh, drop them in the d- description here as well. And uh, looking forward to hearing from you in the future. Glad to have you back. And uh, thanks for thanks for all the amazing contributions on Twitter X. And uh, we'll talk to you soon, bro. No worries. Stay safe. Goodbye. You as well. Have a great night. That's uh, that's Andy. That's uh, a good friend on uh, Twitter X. And uh, he's been uh, he, he's always uh, throughout the day. He's feeding me information, uh, tagging me in some some wild posts that uh, scientific stuff that's kind of coming. And, you know, very much a troubled mind kind of in that same sense, as you noticed. And he linked a couple things. I want to show these to you guys. These will be links will be in the description down below. They're already in the chat over on Discord. If you haven't joined the Discord, now's a good time. Troubledminds.org. Click the Discord link. Uh, so infrasound is what he was talking about. Sometimes we referred to as low frequency sound describes sound waves with a frequency below the lower limit of human audibility generally 20 hertz as defined by the ansi 1 2013 standard hearing becomes gradually less sensitive as frequency decreases so for humans to perceive infrasound the sound pressure must be sufficiently high although the ear is the primary organ for sensing low sound at higher intensities it is possible to feel infrasound vibrations in various parts of the body which everybody knows pump up the bass Pump up the volume, right? Everybody knows this, but except what about the stuff that you can't detect? And that, that becomes really, really terrifying when you think about manipulation, when you think about, again, as uh, Joe said earlier as well, uh, that, you know, they're able to turn on these crowd control sort of directed energy weapons and people's skin start burning, like feeling hot because they've been uh, blasted by a crowd control device uh, by a state actor, right? Uh, hey, get out of here. It's it's a non-lethal situation, but uh, you're going to be scratching and itching and you're having your skin bur- feel like it's burning for Lord knows how long. Weird stuff afoot. And uh, yeah, like Harp, what's up, uh, Lily in Australia? How you doing? Yeah, wild stuff. I don't know. No answers for me, just more questions when we, when we look at this stuff. But that's the final missing piece of the puzzle here. I think infrasound for sure. And then he also linked this. Uh, you can find that. Uh, links will be in the description. RoyalSociety.org, Brainwaves, Neuroscience, Conflict, and Security, talking about uh, exactly this type of stuff, uh, the neuroscience uh, and how all this is affected by, as we were describing all night, uh, this whole simple cognitive tendency has surprisingly profound implications, meaning if you like the person saying the information, you're very much more likely to be perceptive to that information because Michael Strange here, yours truly, is such a charismatic, good-looking young man, and I say that uh, halfway tongue-in-cheek, uh, you're, uh, you're already halfway brainwashed, right? And so you get the meaning. The, 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 you, you, know, you put the, uh, the, the 20-year-old girl in the too tight clothing, and then suddenly whatever she, comes out of her mouth, you're like, yeah, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I mean, and that becomes problematic, doesn't it? But as, as we've always said, and as, like I said, if you look at uh, the past, past 40 years of music, you see how it has changed that, that meme. The meme has become, 
we used to have ugly people making beautiful music. Now we have beautiful people making ugly music. And back to the original idea. Song lyrics getting simpler, more repetitive, angry, and self-obsessed. Ah, everybody got a TikTok channel? <laughs> this TikTok channel? Yeah. Uh, funny enough, a quick TikTok story. I was uh, doing just doing what I do around town, moving stuff from A to B and stuff, uh, support staff and, you know, just, uh, wild stuff. I'm in, I'm in some weird places. And uh, I was rolling through this public space and there was like uh, four teeny bopper girls, right? And they had, it was like this uh, sort of hallway and like this fancy shopping center. And they had this, they had their little phone down on the ground up against like the wall of a store. And they were kind of in the side. It's like calling it an alley is stupid because it's, it's just a space between two very fancy stores, right? Like kind of a nice walkway. And anyway, so, so they're, all, they're all dancing and stuff, right? And I come up and I'm like, oh, dear God, I'm going to be in a TikTok video, right? So I'm like, I'm like, oh, God, I'm trying to, am I going to go around? I'm like, wait, wait till they're done and then click the button. And then I hurry through real fast. But they were totally recording TikTok to some music track playing and they're all dancing in sync. And I was like, oh, get me out of here, right? It was like that. But this is exactly the point. Uh, now that we can do this stuff and have the technology to become sort of that self-centered, self-obsessed, uh, uh, lyrical monster, lyrical gangster, if you know the term uh, and, the, and the reference there, uh, then maybe just maybe this is exactly what we've always expected. Sort of the ego coming to the forefront and everybody wanting to be a superstar, everybody wanting to be whatever, whatever it happens to be. I don't know. It's it just a just a funny story. Notice this happening everywhere around you all the time. And uh, even to the point where it's annoying the crap out of people, you see some of these videos of, uh, you know, people uh, putting TikTok, uh, uh, a phone on like the escalator and like dancing their way up the escalator is like the thing's recording and they run up real fast and try to pick it up before the, you know, the escalator eats it or somebody steals their phone. I mean, this is the type of stuff where you're like, all right, I mean, at what point are we a little over obsessed with ourselves? You get what I mean? Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> what's up? Uh, what's up, why, why? Michael, you can say anything to us and we would obey. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'll remember that. <laughs> and uh, with great power comes great responsibility. Anyway, so we're talking about uh, this this whole bit, right? The old, uh, uh, an unwilling instrument, I'm calling this, but that's us. That's the human instrument, the human mind, the gray matter between our ears, as I always say. Bardic code in the future. What does music look like in 20 years? Uh, which is leading which? And I think Andy said it very smartly there. And I agree, actually. That was my take on this. I think there's a, many things happening, including, of course, manipulation through the zeitgeist and manipulation through, let's say, TikTok or through YouTube or, you know, the shorts or uh, Instagram reels, all this stuff. I think it's all basically uh, sort of in the same space because it's algorithmically trying to hook us. It's that hook, but it's the shortest, fastest hook possible. It's like the 10 second, 15 second video that look, uh, if you've ever tried to make a TikTok video, it's hard, right? Because, you know, I'm not a, a 20 year old female with, you know, uh, too tight clothing, right? And the dancing and whatnot, but you get what I mean, right? There, there's, there's the hook. There's the hook with TikTok these days that that type of thing, uh, dancing around, jiggling and uh, singing, not even singing, lip syncing to a thing, right? Well, a guy like me does that uh, as for, for all of my amazing uh, tendencies and uh, best qualities. It's not going to hook anybody. Right? <laughs> like, nobody's watching that. They're like, what is with this old guy shaking his ass on the interwebs? Get next, next. You get like half a second of watch time. You get it? Anyway, uh, point is that I think uh, all of these things are coming together in this massive manipulation sense. And I think that uh, musically, we are in a bizarre space. And I, I hope the Robert's right. I hope the Robert's right in, in the sense that we have a, a turning of some sort and that uh, maybe the real music comes back, the, the real revolution music. And I mean that in the nicest way, not the, uh, you know, pew pew way. Don't nobody uh, again. Violence is not good. Don't, I'm not encouraging anybody to do that. I'm not even suggesting that. I'm just saying there are different types of revolution songs. And I mean, cultural revolution. That's what I mean. And not the Mao way. Not, not that way, <laughs> not that the, the good way. Anyway, shut your mouth, Mike. You're burying, you're digging yourself a grave here. Anyway, what are your thoughts? Uh, got, got some time left for you. Lots of things here, but consider that. Consider that wild idea that if we're given a charismatic presence, a good-looking person that can speak charismatically and lead you to a thought you never would have considered, well, congratulations, you've been brainwashed. And that's that. You see what's going on here? I don't know. Lots of things happening. Super weird stuff. Infrasound. We're talking music. We're talking manipulation. We're talking Havana syndrome, of course, which could be, dare we say, inaudible music. 
as you would expect an actual uh, <laughs> an actual uh, uh, directed energy weapon to be. I mean, you turn an old Miley Cyrus song on somebody and maybe you make them go crazy. Anyway, love to hear what you think. 702-957-1037. This is Troubled Minds. I'm Michael Strange. Be right back. More after the break. We got James Salcedo coming up and your calls as well. Don't go anywhere. More Troubled Minds on the way. Welcome back to Troubled Minds. I'm your host, Michael Strange. We're streaming on YouTube, Rockfin, Rumble, Twitter, and Twitch. We are broadcasting live on the Troubled Minds radio network. That is KUAP Digital Broadcasting. Now available worldwide, by the way, if you were wondering about that. Yes, indeed. Go check it out at troubledminds.org. Click a listen live or listen now on the very top. Or just search it yourself, KUAP Digital Broadcasting, KUAP-DB. Available worldwide. Okay, here's the deal, right? We're talking an unwilling instrument tonight. And of course, that means you. That means us. That means the the actual human entity that's consuming music. And back to the music idea, right? Uh, yes. Song lyrics getting simpler, more repetitive, angry, and self-obsessed. Number one. Uh, exhibit one. Exhibit two. Here we go. Let's, uh, let's continue, shall we? Uh, this. Borderline personality disorder symptoms linked to music preferences. Oh, hmm. interesting. We have a... A narrative building here. It's a little weird, right? Okay, that's fine. Uh, what do we got? Uh, then we got this. Uh, new psychology research indicates psychopathy is linked to social power and dating success in adverse environments. Okay, and again, that was sort of a tertiary version of this, but the one that brings it all together is not just this infrasound and Havana syndrome bit that we've been talking about for most of the night, but this other uh, thing of the the charismatic. Uh, uh, cult leader, right? The Jim Jones or whatever the, the, you know, the TikTok, uh, uh, whoever the, the good looking, a uh, young person that's wearing too tight clothing and shaking their backside. Uh, and this is the deal. Uh, all these links will be in the description below, but you start to build these narratives based on, you know, science. And then a lot of this is no crap Sherlock, right? A lot of this is, but a simple cognitive tendency has surprisingly profound implications for the spread of biased information, including of course, Music, because, you know, think about music without the visual element. No MTV, no anything, all right? Think about just the audio. Just the audio, right? Does it resonate? Okay? Does it or does it not? Well, then you get a young, attractive person shaking their ass, and they're the the singer of the, the thing. I don't think Beyonce or whatever, right? Like, you, you pick the person. And whatever. Uh, here you go. Have you ever considered that our brains might be more receptive to learning from people who we like compared to those we dislike. Who doesn't like attractive people, eh? Number one, a recent study conducted by researchers in cognitive neuroscience reveals just that. Our ability to learn and make connections between different pieces of information is significantly influenced by our feelings towards the person presenting the information. Essentially, the information comes from, if it comes from someone we like, we find it easier to remember and link together compared to when it comes from someone we dislike. Weird, no? The cult of personality still plays in 2024. And of course, we're moving into a space where the next thing is these influencers that are going to be pixel perfect. They're going to have all the nicest booties and faces without any pores or acne and uh, just going to be, well, likable to the extreme. A charisma score of 25 in the D&D scale, which is godlike. Well, here we go. Strap in, hold on to your butts, because what comes next? And of course, bring this all the way back around to infrasound, Havana syndrome, which they're, they're linking to Russia now. How much of this is, let's say, we're being manipulated by the entities, the powers that be, or how much of this is sort of a slap back to a frustrated cycle of bad politics, bad policy, and the Final throes of a dying civilization, meaning capitalism. I don't know the answers to that. I do know there's a lot of connections here that make me scratch my head and wonder. But uh, Russia, 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 am I right? Ah, a lot of ways to take this. What's on your mind tonight? 702-957-1037. Click the Discord link at troubleminds.org. We'll put you on the show just like this. Let's go to James in Michigan. Salcedo Paranormal. What's up, my man? You're on Troubled Minds. How are you, sir? Go right ahead. 
I'm okay. Can you hear me? How's the uh, subliminal messages messaging going that uh, I can't even say, but I'm sure it's working just fine on you. Have you been doing this to me? Have you been like, like d during the whole show tonight, you've been like sending some, some message that I should be picking up on? Maybe, possibly. No, no, I wouldn't do that to you. Okay. Y y yes, James, right away, James. Go right ahead, James. <laughs> no, but um, great calls from everyone tonight. Uh, and uh, yeah, this, um, this topic, the music thing, I, the, the, that study that talks about the, um, how music has gotten more repetitive and then made people more, or gotten more angry and self-obsessed, the repetitive part doesn't make sense to me because I feel like that you can find examples of that going back probably nearly to the beginning of music. Um, so I, I kind of, I don't, I don't want to say disagree, but I just have a, I kind of have a, like have a natural pushback against that sort of that idea that it's more repetitive. Um, but then again, I, I don't also, I also don't listen to a lot of music from these days either. So I'm probably not the best person to judge that. But well, the other things, well, it just, seems like that is possible. Well, okay, hold your thought on that. Just real quick, like I said, back to 1985, there was still shitty music in 1985. <laughs> I mean, not 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 to be yeah. like get off my lawn, you know, shake shake the uh, you know the unloaded, uh, no, sh shake the, uh, the 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 stick at uh, the, the kids off your lawn and be like, kids these days don't know how to make music. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, uh, just to change myself. I mean, look, uh, you, you can make a joke and like the the connotation is it's a funny joke, right? But then suddenly it's like, I knew it. He's a murderer. I like, know. Just stop it. I people, know. People, like people are so dumb these days. Meaning that uh, every every single thing is a threat. I'm not making threats. It's a joke. It was a metaphor. It was a bad metaphor that I caught myself halfway through. I shake the stick, get off my lawn, kids. But in 1985, music still sucked too. And you're right. There was a lot of repetition. And and I think it was in the dance scene. I think it was in sort of the upcoming. You know, these other spaces that were, uh, you know, as you would expect. I mean, you don't want like a like a dance music to be, you know, like some sort of like a epic poetic gilgamesh like thing right am i right <laughs> anyway uh, sorry to interrupt go, go ahead on that or whatever else you had i'd prefer whatever else you had because i just digressed in a really grotesque way <laughs> no i and i think even going and i can't think of any songs that like to quote right now but i feel like because that my for anyone doesn't know sort of me and my my family um i grew up with in a family of musicians a lot of people in my family at my dad's side have always been really big into music. And I feel like I've heard some songs from even the fifties and early sixties that were also pre uh, fairly repetitive. So that's sort of just my pushback based on my own experience on that part. But the other parts of it, I definitely can, can see that in just what little of modern music that I hear. And the thing about that is it's everywhere. Even if you don't put, uh, any modern music on your own devices you know you're going to hear it when you're out usually somewhere and um and, and other people will have you know their own preferred music playing and so you'll hear it just wherever and i i do i i, I do um feel like that study has a point there is a lot of um anger and i think that self-obsession is also there in a lot of cases but I it's still I still wonder about that because I feel like I don't know again it goes back to data and cherry picking data and what exactly is it are they basing that on you know so I guess I just have questions about that and it leads you back to something you mentioned earlier which is the idea of propaganda how much of this is propaganda and I just I really don't know because I feel like there's so much music throughout time. And there's getting to be more and more. And it's just, for me, it seems really difficult to make, to really, truly make those kinds of um, statements in complete good faith uh, that the studies are making. Yeah, you remember that. Uh, Matt Sell says this, you, you know you're old when the grocery store is playing the jams. <laughs> Dear yeah <laughs> yeah exactly that's exactly right and and that's the point right we live in a propaganda world and i think um you know that that's exactly the point of uh why we talk about these things because surely we feel it surely we see it surely it's one of those things that uh is 
smashed into our into our brains whether we want it or not you know with all the signs and the advertising and the the jingles and the, all the stuff and i mean you know you know me i listen to a lot of radio too to see what people are saying and kind of keep an eye on the propagandist but my god so many commercials and so just just a we're just a wash in nonsense marketing and of course the propaganda aspect of the binary political scene which is again as grotesque as it gets because you know no matter who you vote in they're still bombing people i mean <laughs> that, that 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 type of thing never changes anyway we don't have to go down that road but i mean it's obvious if you you know pay one iota of attention and uh, well, this is why I think they want us talking about Kim Kardashian's ass instead, or you know, having uh, TikTok attention spans and uh, you know, good-looking young people shaking their asses, and actually, um, you know, uh, twelve-second uh, lip sync uh, challenges. It, I mean, it's the absurdity is there. We live in clown world, and that's a fact. But uh, do you think this has something to do with uh, with Havana syndrome? You don't have to tackle that right away if you got more. But uh, I, I, I couldn't help but but wonder if this was connected in some way, you know, the sort of mass media brainwashing and then back to the Savannah syndrome, the directed energy weapon, which is, you know, could be infrasound, could be uh, actual audio, which could be, I don't know, a song, you know, this type of stuff. I, I don't really know, but you think there's a connection there or whatever else you got? Of course, you don't have to, you don't have to listen to me. Don't listen to me. What, whatever you got, go ahead. I, I, I can, I can do that pretty easy. No, I'm just kidding. But um, yeah, the, the, the music, I don't. I think I was pretty much done with that, but I I have been wondering about the whole the Havana syndrome, and I remember you know just briefly hearing about that being mentioned as happening in or around embassies, and I'm just wondering about all the devices that are built into those kinds of buildings, and who installs them, and how all that works. To me, that seems like maybe a more plausible way to plant some kind of a weapon that it looks like a speaker and and basically have it set in a room for certain people that you want to do that to that's the scary part to me is i just wonder all the all the the sort of the the logistical stuff that goes into making those places or keeping those places updated and how hard that would be you know maybe it's not the the car or the van outside the window Maybe it's the tech company that is there to install or, you know, provide supplies. Here you go. Here's this new set of speakers for your offices. Tune into the matrix. You'll be fine, yeah. James. Everything will be just fine. Yeah. I think that's what's coming, of course. Like, even if it's uh, audible or not, that, that becomes really the question here is what we're dealing with in terms of uh, brainwashing, propaganda, and all the rest. But then... How deep it goes. Uh, we talked about this before, of course, but now suddenly we have, you know, again, isn't it, isn't it wild how you kind of watch the news cycles and there's always new science that suggests, you know, the same as the old science. It's like a, it's kind of like that meme, you know, the astronaut, like, wow, the new science is the same as the old science. And it's like the astronaut always has been. <laughs> it's, it's like we're, we're pretending like we're discovering all these new things, but you know, half of the stuff we're talking about tonight is n no shit Sherlock style. It's like, come on, really? Like we knew this, we knew this. So how is this like a new study? It's some new study with like 800 people or something. No offense to the 800 people. I'm sure they're fine people. That's kind of a small sample size when you're talking about, you know, an entire zeitgeist of uh, uh, individuals and what's happening and, you know, all the rest. It's, uh, I don't know, it's, it's difficult, let's say, uh, when we have these, you know, new studies suggest, yeah, no shit. So did all the old studies, you know, they, a lot of those said this too. So I don't know, where, where do we sit and uh, how much uh, brainwash you think is uh, cascading down on us in the audio uh, spectrum, I guess? Yeah, and that reminded me of the one thing I forgot when it came to music too, uh, going back to that. I'm just thinking of all the different, uh, going back to when there were CD covers, uh, album covers, but they were on compact disc cases. I remember like a lot of the cover album covers from 60s, 70s, 80s, some 90s. A lot of it, yes, there was plenty of album covers that were images of, of like the artists, but there was also plenty of stuff in there that did not show them at all, did not show the person making the album at all. It was just a picture of objects or buildings or, and and then I remember I've seen pictures of newer albums, the album covers over the years, and it is very much that 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 meme, you know, that the people that are making you know music now they're 
they're physically prettier, but the music is not so, not doesn't sound so good. It's not, the message isn't good. And those album covers, they, a lot of them be, seem to feature these people just like what is described with TikTok, that same kind of figure. And again, those images can be altered, especially in a still image. You can do whatever you want with that a lot easier because it's just a still image. So I thought that um, it just made me think of album covers I've seen over the last 20, 30 years. Yeah. And well, that's the thing. Like basically, you remember in the old days, uh, well, you're not old, so uh, you're too young for this. But in the old days, I'll, I'll tell you, all right, uh, all right, uh, young youngins, uh, sit down around the fire and let uh, Uncle Mike tell you a story about the way things used to be. In the old days, uh, you would have to pay, you know, 12, 13, 14, 15 bucks for a new album. And uh, you couldn't really listen to it because, you know, you only heard like one uh, radio single and it sounded fire. And you're like, yeah, this is what I love. And then you go down to the, the music store and then you'd watch, you pick up, pick up the plastic, the, the silky plastic that had not been opened yet. It was so perfect. And uh, the, the, the cover art was amazing. And you knew there was going to be some magic inside of the CD itself. And, uh, of course, then you buy it and it's the overpriced and, but you know, it's worth it. And then you take it home. And the only song that's good is the song that was on the radio. And beyond that, you get sick of the radio song in like 10 days and everything else is horrible. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> horrible. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Horrible. And that's the way things used to work in the old days. And, and we're talking like, you know, 1990 or whatever. Uh, it was, you know, pretty uh, internet where not everybody had a computer yet. Uh, Napster wasn't a thing, uh, all the rest, you know, and of course all the, all that's history and stuff. But I mean, that's the way things used to be. And well, welcome to it now. Now think about it. The same thing applies where you get like the pretty picture, the glossy plastic, you know, you got like a new thing. It's sort of the materialistic aspect of, I really love this and I really want this to be amazing. And then it's terrible. Well, it's like we're uh, on TikTok. We're selling just the album cover and that's it. We're, we're selling like a pretty picture and like 10 seconds of a good song that those kids didn't even create. Eh. <laughs> welcome to, welcome to 2024, James. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I'm I'm jumping all around here, but um, Robert talking about the whole thing with Russia, everything's Russia, and all that. It just made me think of I don't remember the book very, like very well now, but like detail for detail. But I mean, 1984, where, that comes up again and again. The there were the uh, city like London or whatever the city where the, the characters were at. It was getting still getting hit by rockets. And it was always played off as, oh, it's from the enemy. It's always from the enemy. But there's hardly ever, if I remember right, there's never any of like the officials, like the people that are in charge, are never at any of the places that get hit. It's always just in the middle of town where all the rest of the people are at. And, you know, then all the people that are in power, all the, the security and all that, and the responders come after. And I just wonder, in that world, is that really just the, their own, in that book, again, just saying this is a book, in that book, is it really the enemies of that government or is it, you know, some kind of a government operation? Yeah. And yeah. I just wonder how often that happens, not the same way, but how often that happens in the real world. Yeah, you know what's funny, right? Like uh, in that regard, and we're, we're spinning off the rails here a little bit, but that's okay. It's what we do here. Is uh, is this? You notice uh, when they, you know, kind of have these these bombs drop and some, you know, civilians accidentally die, accidentally, right? A non precision strike, as they say, or something to that effect, or an accident, the good old fashioned term of the accident, right? Well. Wildly enough, uh, nobody seems to be massively outraged except for like a small vocal minority, you know, here or there type of stuff. But then the second, you know, you uh, uh, do an, like an effective airstrike and hit a general somewhere in a place that they, they never expected you knew the general would be, which just happened recently. They're like, everybody's like, ah, <laughs> what are you doing? You can't, you can't hit that guy in that place. What are you doing and you know there's been like massive carnage for like weeks and weeks and weeks of like innocent people just getting obliterated and there's no international outrage about that it's uh it is the true upside down and is disgusting and it is uh, something that we should remember and consider and the propaganda is uh hot and heavy because of course they want you to choose a side so you can cheer when people die 
And I strongly caution you to be very careful uh, to, 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 to find yourself cheering when people die. Okay, just a, not not to you, James. Just in in general terms, I know you're not cheering that. That's that's a, not your style. But yeah, I think you're absolutely right, 100. Uh, percent What else you got? Go yeah. right, sir. Just uh, I would also, and, and you've recommended too before. Um, if anyone hasn't read uh, 1984 and Animal, Animal Farm at least once, um, check it out because yeah, it's not as, as the saying goes. It's not supposed to be a manual, but. Uh, yeah, that's all. I'll leave it at that with with that. But um, going back to the music again, it it's my again because of my family has been musicians for years. I, there's been a lot of discussion over the years about that, and they they all seem to agree with a lot of what we've been talking about here tonight, which is that you know the it's not so much that there isn't any any new good music. It's just that that's all independent, and you have to look around for it. My I, my um my i don't really look at it a lot but like on facebook all my family is there and half of what they share is videos of people that they're just finding and and in some cases it's, it's even like like kids or teenagers that are like prodigies with music with musical abilities um but others it's just you know videos of different people that are making things that my family likes and but they're not, you know, they don't have the record labels and all those things. They're they're doing it on their own. So that's definitely a thing. I mean, just um, if you if you ever feel like looking for music, just consider kind of searching around the web for people that aren't um, don't have these huge record label deals and all that as well. Yeah, that's what the Robert was saying as well. Like you, you just got gotta gotta find the people, you know. Like there's talented people out there. It's just uh, they're not pressed to the top for a very specific reason, which is a uh, wild. It's a uh, it's it's again living in the upside down. The most talented people again in like a in like a you know a, a fair society, you would expect that the most talented people to be you know not not let's say you know Elon Musk rich or you know but at least. At least, you know, doing good work and, you know, making a living, making some art that's, you know, talented stuff. But that's not the way the world works because, of course, it's a, uh, it's, it's the world we live in. Amazing stuff. Uh, I had an idea, James, and so, yeah, let me know how you feel about this. Uh, I'm kind of, you know, uh, sometimes we get to the point where we've talked about this stuff over and over and over again, you know, the same topic. And then you get to the end of the third hour and uh, you get you get as long as you want of course uh, but uh, i'm like eh, you know we're talking about music tonight maybe we plug the discord and do like a you know sort of a, a dj aspect i'll play a few songs in the discord after the show's over which you know is might be soon or might not be soon let's see but uh, links are in the descri- in the chat if anybody wants to join the discord that haven't haven't actually joined the discord yet pop in and uh, we'll do a, a few uh, maybe some 80s tunes some some good music from the the old days just for a, a song or two or three or four. Let's see how we feel. But uh, yeah, links in the chats if you guys are into it. So why not? If you're not, that's cool too. But uh, just an idea. What else you got, James? Go ahead, sir. No, it sounds good. And I'll just stick around and uh, comment here and there as the rest of the show goes on. Then I'll, I'll definitely stick around for the for the music after. Give us the music. Give us the music. Uh, for It will be music perfectly curated to make sure you are brainwashed going forward. Ah, 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 ah. Yes, indeed. Uh, all right. So, uh, James Salcedo, you know him, you love him. Salcedo Paranormal. You know him, you love him. Follow, uh, search it yourself, S A L S I D O space, paranormal, two S's. Go uh, go find the thing and click the things and troubleminds.org forward slash friends. And you can find James down there as well. It says follow James. Please follow him in all the places. Go check out the podcast. Doing amazing work, uh, paranormal stuff and other stuff, book reviews and all kinds of wild things happening with Salcedo Paranormal. And if you're not listening to that, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what you're doing. There is no health care in the music industry. Yeah, right. Well, there's no health care in any industry anymore. I mean, let's be real about that. Uh, is, isn't that a wild thing, by the way, the old, uh, the situation of, uh, you know, you're like, ah, we're all right, cool. We're middle aged now. And, uh, now it's time to, you know, take healthcare seriously. And then you're like, Oh, uh, it costs how much? <laughs> like, like what the, what in the world? No, you're good, Matt. You're good, Matt. Uh, you're like, wait, wait, uh, you, uh, you added a, you added a digit to that, right? I mean, that, that I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you, you you meant you, yeah you, the, the 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 decimals in the wrong place right? 
Oh, no. That should be a, a decimal, not a comma. Thank you very much. Yes, ex exactly. Right. It's, it's, it's absurd. The absurdity, again, clown world, all the clown world, all the things. Ah, that's grotesque. Anyway, uh, lo lots of stuff here. Like I said, uh, there's, there's a lot of things happening with this. And the reason I'm, I know we've talked about this, maybe not super often, but often enough where it might annoy you. But I did notice a bunch of things happening in the zeitgeist or let's say the news cycles regarding exactly this type of stuff, sort of music studies and how this kind of fits into the larger sense of things and, you know, new science or whatever. But I don't know, you know, song lyrics getting simpler, more repetitive, angry and self self-obsessed makes sense. I mean, it makes sense. That's exactly the part of this, the point of this and why I think suddenly everything else kind of snaps into place if you look at all this and including it and up to and beyond even Havana syndrome, whether that's real or not. Again, wildly enough, there's, there are people that are like, nah, it's not real. And, and they're emphatic and you're like, wait, so how, how could it, I don't know. It boggles my mind that if somebody's suffering from brain damage and you're like literal actual brain damage and you're like, well, it must have been the crickets or something. And I'm straw manning, of course, the, the counter argument. But, or you're like, oh, it must have been stress or something. It's like, it's like come on, there's got to be like actual science that kind of backs that up and not like people hip shooting being like, well, you know, the absence of evidence is the evidence of absence. And so that means, of course, that uh, this is just uh, crickets and uh, mental health problems. Really? I mean, brain damage just spontaneously manifests. I don't know. That's where I stand on that. I think the Havana syndrome stuff is scary as hell because it's an invisible weapon. It's a silent weapons for quiet wars, as we've talked about. And that type of stuff is um, mm, mm, not uh, not the best because, you know, I could go to sleep right now and they flip one on. Some black van pulls up in front of my house and turns a switch on and I'm being roasted all night while I sleep, you know, like that's the type of stuff that's just horrifying it's just you, you just can't defend against it you have to sleep in a lead box or something ah anyway anyway anything to add to that james we'll wrap this and do the dance party on the discord <laughs> oh. guess i better sell that black van <laughs> dan, dan. really james you're the guy <laughs> oh my god all right okay i thought you were my friend <laughs> dear god james <laughs> oh never mind no, i'm safe you can't drive <laughs> <laughs> ah, no, see, there, there you go there you go that's 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 see, that's why you're okay okay just, just keep thinking that mike just oh keep that, snap yeah. <laughs> snap all right all right fair enough fair enough we got the neural link coming in jmj <laughs> grand theft auto to mike's house <laughs> to fire up <laughs> i'm just joking no here. but um <laughs> Yeah, uh, didn't mean you don't need to get choked up, choked up over my my comments. I mean, geez, Mike. Yeah, totally, totally. Not, uh, not that good. Make me but cry. No, James. I'm I'm sorry. I'm in a weird mood tonight. But um, I mean, th great show and great calls and and chat and everything. And uh, thank you for having me on as always. Thanks for being here as always. You were the man. Uh, we got. To, looks like we got a Jtro coming up, and then we'll uh, Discord dance party. I'll play a few songs if you want to pop over here. Uh, we'll go back to the '80s. Ah, oh, the 80s. I love the 80s. And it's not going to be, uh, it won't be Devo <laughs> in, in, in honor of Amy. No Devo being played. Uh, it, hit the, hit the, uh, the link in the chat and uh, come join the Discord if you have not. It's more, more of a, uh, a ploy to get you to come join the Discord for a little bit of bonus time at Troubled Minds and uh, listen to some great music and a little bit of great chat with the, uh, the uh, Troubled Minds fam. So pop in here and come say, hey, ah, all the stuff, all the stuff. Uh, let's do it. Uh, thank you, James. You are the best, as you know. And let's go to uh, Jay in New York. What's up, my man? You're on Troubled Minds with Mike and James. Uh, what's on your mind? Go right ahead. Did I get the technology right, Mike? Looks yeah. like my green button came on. Everything's looking good. You sound good. Everything's fine. Go right ahead. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on the, the topic or anything else tonight? Go right ahead. Well, I mean, I just I, I look back at the conversations that we've had about all these like things in the past. And it's like, I'm working with a couple of young kids building these things. And I'm like, hey, did you check this out on Twitter? And I was like, no, I didn't check it out on Twitter. But I think I talked to a couple of guys like three years ago about that. You know, just something's rotten in the state of Denmark, I tell you. As they say. It's, some, it, it's just something's rotten that whole thing with the music and everything else like that. And 
you know how it is, Mike. You're doing your best to pay attention right now, you know. And it's how does that happen, you know? And James with his music thing saying that you know repetitive has been going on forever. I mean, think about it when you were just tapping on the block when you were a kid. Don't 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 don't. You know. It's something that's in you. Sims back to all the other shows. I don't want to keep you too late. Kind of interested in Stan's party, by the way. Uh, well, it's going to be a few songs and some uh, some uh, some great chat with some great friends. But uh, yeah, it's all fine. Uh, 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 what's your take on Havana Syndrome? Real now or somewhere in between? I, they got to be able to do something like that. You know, come on, Mike. I mean, I'm 50 now. I played all kinds of video games. They got weapons out there that... You, you would love to just fire once. Let me see that thing. Oh, cool. Can I try it out? You know, the, all the kids play Fortnite and Call of Duty and Grand Theft Auto. And by the way, when James shows up, it's going to be a Nissan next era. It's kind of a gold <laughs> color because I'm going to teach you how to drive. And we're coming in a standard. So watch out. Oh, dear God. All right. I'm getting in the car because I'm not going to be anywhere outside of it. <laughs> anywhere in the tri-state area uh yep uh, this, is, this is a good plan i like this plan it seems like a good plan I, I, i'm okay with this yeah i have to wear helmets and whatnot yeah for sure for sure oh it's got no it's cool no it's fine it's got one of those great big huge rea or whatever they are the fancy brush guard things on front that you put your winch on and everything it's probably worth more than the truck itself Oh, that seems completely no, safe. So no, no yeah, helmets. Yeah, whatever no, we hit, it'll no, be fine. No helmets, no we'll seatbelts. Knock necessary. it right out of the way. It's gonna be fine. We're <laughs> gonna be fine. Yep. Well, keep right. it under fifty-five, James. Will be cool. All right. Fair Roll enough. cages. Fair enough. I, I'm with you on the on the, like you described. Uh, it's it's been a long time. This type of stuff they've been talking about this type of technology for a very very long time, and for. I don't know, people that to, to literally just write this off as, uh, it seems uh, implausible that you would have a directed energy weapon that could give people brain damage through walls. What? <laughs> like, what? The firefighters walk around with a thing on your house when your house is on fire so they know where to shoot the water. You know, they got thermal imaging camera. You can't make a scope with that? Okay, so, oh, you can't make a boof microwave pulse bullshit you know yeah I, you can send a microwave wave from the thing that i'm talking to you right now onto the radio tower that's bouncing it into space and going through all its little ones and zeros in the gig to get to the discord to come back and have a high quality audio call go on you can't tell me they can't come up with some some redneck somewhere and whatever all the rednecks out there not to be offensive i'm kind of a redneck but you tell me i can't come up with an idea like that you know yeah back in the 20s the guys were making the rip guns and stuff like that out of pieces of black pipe yeah it's funny when, when you look at uh like the sort of the presidential details now, like the highest level of technology, like they're, they're, they're using Buck Rogers guns. Like they have, they have actual, the like old school, like kinetic, you know, Glocks or whatever. They still carry that stuff, but the, which are people stoppers. But uh, what they're using is these like really weird, like plastic looking massive things to shoot down drones. They are like drone jammers. <laughs> so they have like, the, they're like these massive well, I mean, things. Remember when they were going through the, yeah. all the, um, Summer of Peace or whatever it was back then. I can't remember what it was really called. In California, but, where they when, crack their heads? No, I'm, Ferguson, Missouri is where I was referring to. Oh, a couple years, started. Few, few years back. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, long years back. But they were driving around in the streets in the armored vehicles playing music. And it was off the hook. Like, what the is that? You know, the, because there are 100,000 people live streaming it all over. That was back before. I don't want to get us in any trouble here, Mike. That's why I was kind of digging the dance party. That's kind of why I don't. 
Fair enough. Don't get you us know in trouble. I am about the f bomb. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean that's that's a different type of trouble. The the real type of trouble you, is you, being you, too close to the target. Then uh, then you start to get uh, you start, yeah. Start but the f bomb usually goes off before you start saying what you're thinking about, and then it's like, well, wait a minute now. I love this show. I don't want to miss it tomorrow because I dropped an f bomb, not the word. You know. Amen. Amen. Well said. Do you have a uh, Do you have a J trail for us tonight? I, I I do. I stole it from a friend that I met recently on Facebook. Just for those people who are privy to that. Nice. The, the Facebook. The Facebook business. Privy to the Facebook business. Yeah. I uh, yeah. I haven't logged into Facebook in a long time, so uh, forgive me on that. But uh, well, that's what it is. Yeah, it is what it is. Can I? I I'm just curious as to whether or not I can say the name of the person that I got it from, just because it's uh, been neat, but. I don't know about that if, yet. If, if you Maybe do just, next time. If you do, just say first next names. Time. Yeah, yeah, just just first yeah. names. So, so for privacy purposes, you don't want to dox people or whatever, or you know, because who knows yeah. how many people. It's not really the name anyway. Okay, but it, it's a nickname. Fair enough. All right, so here we go. This is going to uh, begin the the outro of the Troubled Minds radio show, and we will intro to the Discord to play a few more uh, cool jams from the '80s, in my opinion, because maybe we'll take some. Uh, uh, Drop it in the chat if you got a uh, a uh, request. But yeah, go ahead, play the music, do the thing, come join the Discord, and uh, we'll, we'll we'll hang around for, for a few more minutes and uh, do some some wild eighty stuff for a second, or maybe some nineties. We'll see what's whatever we're in the mood for. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, men in black, reptilians, cryptids, aliens, wherever you may reside, I bring to you the J Tro. As long as we have memories, yesterday remains. As long as we have hope, tomorrow waits. As long as we have love, today is beautiful. As long as you have God, anything and everything is possible. Amen. I love it. It was from uh, Gil, a new friend that I met on Facebook, running down rabbit holes. Sometimes that happens. New friends are good. Old friends are good. All the friends are good. As long as it's not the type of friends that bring a black van, park them outside your house, and flip on some type of machine while you're sleeping. <clears throat> in any case, <laughs> in any case, what you're talking Nissan about. Nissan Xterra. It's a standard. <laughs> Muffler's kind of loud. You'll hear us coming. Amen. Instead of running, just put the beer in the fridge. Amen. Put the beer in the fridge. Uh, you know what to do if you got beer. If you. Uh, drink them if you got them, smoke them if you got them, all the rest of that, or if it's too late in the night and you've had uh, one too many or not quite many enough yet, uh, it, it's okay to save some for tomorrow. Uh, if you want to help Troubled Minds, you know what to do. Help our friends, troubledminds.org forward slash friends. Uh, help uh, all of our amazing friends. And like I said, if you want to be on that list, it's a um, it, it's a big club and you are in it this time. We're just, uh, we're just doing the thing, hanging out, making as many friends as possible and trying to talk about things that are important to uh, whatever comes next. And whatever comes next, I'm not a prophet. I never claim to be. I don't have any inside information. I'm just reading news cycles and talking to you guys. And you notice how close we are sometimes to some really wild stuff going down. Amazing stuff. If you want to help Trouble Minds directly, don't forget to spread the word. Let people know a conversation is happening where we're not going to tell you who to vote for. Unless, of course, I'm running for office and I'll be like, vote for Michael Strange. But I would never do that because what a waste of time. Uh, but otherwise, uh, no, <laughs> we're not going to do that. It's, this isn't politics. This isn't the news cycles. This isn't the nonsense they tell us. This is the things that I think and we think are important. That's why we talk about these things. That's it. Uh, click the Discord link. Come say hi. Come join the thing. A uh, little bit of a, a, a couple few songs after this and we'll uh, just kick it and uh, listen to some music together for a moment. Join the Discord, troubledminds.org. Click the Discord link and uh, come say hi. I see Sylvain jumped in there. What's up, Sylvain? All right. Uh, if you want to help Trouble Minds directly, links are in the description down below. Uh, Ferrari count's coming up awfully low. So uh, if you're into that, uh, you can spend some money down there if you appreciate the work that I've done or the work that we've accomplished together. It does help. I know you don't judge life in numbers of Ferraris. It's a bad joke. Anyway, uh, as we finish, it goes exactly like this. Be sure, be strong, be true. Thank you for listening. From our troubled minds to yours, have a great night.